Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Escape Gaming Euro Cup. We saw in round number one the Viper and MBL going at it in a best of three. Viper able to carry that series in two games. Again, I'm Killer B. This is the Escape Gaming Euro Cup. Uh, and we are ready to rock and roll into the second set of games. It will also be a best of three. And we will bring the players up in just a moment. But my friend who's standing next to me has someone else to bring up first. That is right, and we have our casters to bring to the stage first. What would it be without the casters to guide you through it? Uh, welcome back to the stage, Nilpford, and joining him this time will be T90. as those guys settle themselves in and get ready for another big set of matches here live in Cologne, Germany. We will begin to introduce the players. Uh, first up in the blue trunks will be the man himself all the way from Spain. We will have Tato. And his opponent in this best of three, all the way from Austria, it will be Leary. So while the players get settled down, we're gonna throw it over to your casters. If they could uh, turn on their mics, that would be great. <laughs> and, uh, and take it away, guys. Test, test, test. Test, there we go, awesome. Man, I'm excited to be here. Very intense first series, but this series should be even better. Both players, obviously, top of the world, but they might be a bit closer when it comes to skill. Yeah, I, I think they are. I think that Tato is probably a little bit more well-known for his knowledge of the game. We talked about that probably out of all the four players. Tato probably knows a little bit more, has an extra bit of uh, knowledge there. And then we have Leary, who's this kid with incredible micro. I talked to Viper the other night. Viper said he thinks he has the best micro in the game right now. Probably, yeah. I have to say, like, um, for sure, Leary, maybe slam when it comes to some split micro. But this kid is only 17 years old. At least that's what we thought. Yeah. It's incredible that he's gotten here. And he's going to be up against Tato next. And I guess it's the map pack first. Um, it's also very important to know all the maps and on what to do in every situation, which is why he has excelled versus some others only play one or two settings. So both of these players are going to be giving us a good set of games here. Absolutely. Three maps, same settings in this round again. It seems like players are setting themselves up. And yeah, I want to hear your prediction for the series. I heard a lot of side bets going on here because this series is so neck and neck. The predictions are really difficult and you just put me on the spot. I'm not here to ask uh, you the questions. We can't do a tie. There's an odd number of games. So I'm going to lean with Tato. I think Tato's extra knowledge, I think Tato being comfortable with the game we're playing here, I think Tato has that little bit of an extra edge. But you never know when that young kid comes in what he's going to do on the big stage when he's never yeah. been there before. It's so tough. Like so many people around here. I'm, I'm not sure how comfortable you can really be playing this year. I asked Tato yesterday, and he said 60-40 in his favor. 60-40 in his favor. Uh, maybe that was being modest from Tato. He's a pretty modest guy. Maybe he's a little bit more confident than that, but uh, it is going to be very, very close. And you're right, we're casting in front of people like this for the first, well, sorry, for my first time. So. But, yeah, it's more important that they never played on a big stage. Like, we have a lot of background noises, so many cosplayers running around as well. You can't get distracted so easily. The sound is different, like your keyboard positioning. It is, it is very difficult to really get adjusted quite nicely. We did come here yesterday, did set everything up. But still, it's tough. And it's time to click in, I would say. All right, let's get this going. Then let's start into series number one, uh, series number two of this day and we are set. Oh, 
All right, game one between Leary and Tato in the green. We have Leary. Leary is playing as the Portuguese. And in the blue, we have Tato. Tato is playing as the Portuguese as well. This map, we have casted a lot of very oh, good games damn. on. Damn, those ma this map always generates incredible games. It is Gold Rush. So many T90 woos on the map already. <laughs> gold spots, mass amount of gold spots here in the middle on this big hill. And the fighting after you yeah, finish your small gold spots for the middle will just be so damn intense. Yeah, it, it's an interesting map because as a casual, you play this map an awful lot. So you play Gold Rush and, you know, a lot of people are just taking their good old time to get the castles up and fortifications in the middle. But this is actually a very good map for expert play. So as Nilly noted, there are some gold piles next to these TCs, but there are not many. Players will be forced to go to the middle later on in this game. So I'm going to let you introduce the maps, talk about some of the maps here. Maybe start with Leary or Tato and we'll talk about the rest of the things that we have in front of us. So I would say Liri with a pretty tight... Oh, let, let's talk about Tato first then. Um, he has a nice defensive goal, open berries, but I don't really see how he can have very good walls to the front. Like, he has back spots, that's nice for him, but I think he will be raided quite easily, especially because Liri is kind of known for to go for the crossbow arbalest tag there and yeah then it's getting really tough the second gold spot very really exposed Deer's not really in the back he doesn't have any extra legs to fish off so i would say his map tough to play with it's very open for both players i look at leary's base it's all open on the front uh, if he tries to wall forward he's going to meet a bunch of wolves which would be fun uh, two stones in the same area he does have one gold closer to his town center which is very nice for him uh, that way it'll be a little bit secure. That other gold is in the back, but still the same for Leary. Quite open, could be open to aggression. We're talking about the Portuguese, Nilly. So what do you think strategy-wise we could see? Ooh, that's a very good question. That's what I asked myself as well. So like the Imperial Age composition is so much easier to say because yeah, ha yeah just having bombard cannons with ballistics basically is a very safe choice there. But going into it, I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a thrust into crossbows. I think that suits Leary's style pretty well. Yeah, I feel like Gold Rush in general is kind of suited towards that. Normally you pick civilizations which are quite strong on the early castle age or benefit later on in the game. So a drush into fast castle is normally what you see, which will be interesting because it's not easy to close this map off for both players. Uh, Tato currently, uh, you'll notice he lured in a deer, so that's going to give him an extra food boost. Uh, both players have four on wood, so they can go for that drush. But yeah, quite good start for both players as far as their economy goes. They don't see any hiccups. And we'll find out in about, well, seven population. We'll know what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, about that, I would say indeed. Tato, very kind of mill towards the potential attack coming up, that's a bit surprising to me. Yeah. I think like right hand side would have You'd want to get on the other yeah. side. Yeah, I mean, it's a... It's something to point out, but I mean, at this level, they're so good, one little placement of a mill is, is such a huge difference, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by that. So Tato now going for the loom. His second four still... Where, where? It's still in the back, okay, so that's a bit later for him compared to Leary, who's already now shooting his second four. He's trying to delay that... Loom for quite some time, and Liri actually now one and a half villagers ahead. Tato slipped his dark edge up a bit already. Yeah, maybe he was luring the deer. Occasionally you'll lure in the deer, and it'll cause you to do a little bit too much for the dark age, which is relatively slow. But he's going to bring in his boar now, uh, scouting the right side of his map, and he's coming back in. You can see the fog of war there. So good scouting. Um, obviously getting Loom is not ideal early on, because it does slow down your economy. I'm very interested to see if we're going to see that barracks in a moment. Because that could be coming out in the next two pop for him. Uh, Leary, meanwhile, uh, not sure. Could be doing the same as well, but he could always opt to go another route. Well, we can see Leary with 200 wood, so is Tato, and he is now sending one villager to the front. So Tato indeed will go for some militias, maybe MDA, but at least the barracks is around the corner for sure. And Leary at the same time is adding farms. That most of the time indicates that we won't see a rush. Yeah, th that'll indicate that we're probably going to see a feudal attack, which begs the question, what will we see with Portuguese? Uh, normally, I would expect man-at-arms or drush with Portuguese, but 
maybe he'll go into archers? Like, what do you think? Will he really go scouts here? I think he might feel that the three tile defensive gold spot is pretty good for him to just have four or five villagers working there, get some archers, get some skirms mixed in as well, and then play a very defensive game because he's so incredibly good with all those archers and skirmishes. Yeah, well, he's going to click up now, and then we'll see what his plan is in the next couple of minutes. Uh, Tato, meanwhile, is getting his barracks up. And for Tato, if he's up against archers, this could be bad. He hasn't actually queued up any militia yet. It's been a pretty messy dark age, I think, for Tato. Yeah. Uh, he's on two different sheep right now, oh, wow. and maybe struggling for the resources undecided of what he wants to do. I like the fact that he is house walling a bit on the front. Eventually, he'll try and get to the right-hand side. But... Yeah. Looking like a better start for Leary. Absolutely. Tito, so much later with the uptime first. He's playing at pop 24 compared to the pop 20 tier of Leary. And that's very untypical because MA is really not a unit that you can run around with a lot. But you need to have him basically in his face or in the face of your enemy very early on. And if you're 50, 55 seconds later, that's going to be tough. Well, a good thing for Tato. At least at the moment, I don't see that he is going to be... Yeah, he's going to be going for Man at Arms, I assume, which is much later. But uh, the Wolves are actually right in the path that they would take. <laughs> so I guess it's good that he hasn't drushed. A Man at Arms won't be good either against all those Wolves. That would not, it'd be very unfortunate for him. Uh, Leary has definitely scouted that area. I did check that. But he's building himself up for that Feudal Age attack. Uh, most likely... Well, I don't know. I, I like his walls. With just a couple walls, he's made his base very good. In fact, he's fully walled in. Two golds, essentially. Two villagers going forward to build that next military building. Yeah, and maybe he's going for another option that we haven't mentioned yet, which might be the stable. Yeah. And indeed, that's interesting, I would say. And yeah, that's pretty good for Tetsuo because his MA won't be too bad against that. But obviously, the map control will absolutely be in the favor of Liri here. I do agree. At the same time, I'm, I'm interested to see where Tato's man-at-arms will go. He, Leary has just scouted that. The man-at-arms are not going to get in these walls anyway. Leary will be able to wall behind, and uh, Tato may run through the walls. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to... Oh, no, he actually... If you look, he placed the palisade on the wall. Yeah, so, so he knows. Go. I'm kind of disappointed, but it's good for Tato. <laughs> and I, again, I still think the man-at-arms will, will be a struggle for him. And he's going to need to wall up as well at home, which he hasn't completely done. Has he scouted the stable? Looks like we have a pause. Okay. Seems like some small technical issues, mm -hmm. issues, but he already switched back into the game, so we should start any second now. Did uh. M&A aggression? Ah, Tato's oh, saying his keyboard German. was in German. Well, shame uh, on Tato yes. for not learning seems German like, before he got like here. That's fine now, and <laughs> yeah. Those bad Germans, and so many keys are wrong with the German yeah. keyboard, obviously. Well, a scout from Leary is actually attacking one of the gold villagers. That gold villager is going to have to run away towards the TC. Leary will run away. That's a very good move from him just to delay the economy. And Leary has a very good opportunity now. The base is open for Tato. And Tato is going to transition into archers. His man at arms are not going to be able to do anything. They haven't even gotten to Leary's base to trouble him yet. And Tato is not queuing up any spearmen. He is having one MA queued up and is now going for an archery range, only one villager on gold. So that will be MA and skirmishes at home against scouts. Uh, not really the best option. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, that, that MA is very surprising. It, almost so surprising, I would think it might have been a misclick because he knows the scouts are coming now. So. I, I would expect a spear in this situation. Something he hasn't created. He's trying to wall off a little bit. He sees the three scouts on the way. Uh, the man at arms is, of course, trying to help out, but these scouts are incredibly fast, taking a couple hits at that villager and running away. Yeah, the problem was he actually did not see the stable yet. And let's see mm. a lot of damage on that. MA needs to fall back here. It's getting him home safe. But those scouts didn't take any damage. At the same time, nice kill here in the middle. And Liri in full control. He really is in full control. And, you know, the man-at-arms, again, wasted on the front. He's going for his own archery range, so he's able to defend from that. I think the theme so far for Tato has just been poor scouting. It all, I, I believe it was scouting that messed up his economy earlier on in this game. And it, now he did not scout that stable. His unit composition, really not the best. 
He's going to have to wait till he masses a lot of archers. And there's four scouts on the front for Leary, so it's going to take a long time for those archers to have any effect. Yeah, absolutely. Leary in full control. He has a nice mobile army. And switch in the po to the point of view of Tito, or stay in the, to the point of view of Tito, and put on Fog of War and see what he sees. He sees nothing. Look at that. Exactly. He doesn't see the gold, doesn't see the wood line. He didn't see the stable. No idea about the two archer range coming up. Tito really losing the game of information here. Yeah, and of course, there's a lot of pressure here, so it's always very interesting to see who does well in the very first game. As Skirmishers out for Leary with the Scouts and the Skirms, he will finish off the Man-at-Arms just because they're being a pest, but he has the counter right there in front of us. No, he has the counter for what Tato's going to be going for. Already two archers in this one archer range for Tato, so this is looking incredibly good for Leary. And Fletching on the way as well, so... Just a perfect thing, but now the Tinaini Wu is finally in the middle. Look at that. Gaia gets more kills than Tato. Killing one skirmish here. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. I was waiting for that. All right, so I feel kind of bad now because we have so many people watching this. Many people don't know who I am, so they're probably confused why a professional caster would be getting excited over such a thing. Well, but, uh, we, we will only cast from the two insiders. Ah, How about okay. your moms? Thanks. Right. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a skirmisher just went down. And that did idle Leary's economy a little bit there. He had to garrison yeah. some of those villagers. And got one skirmisher. Yeah. So, and that really delayed his attack, honestly. Like, he would have been, like, close to the walls of Chateau now. But since he needed to fall back, Chateau got another sweet 30 seconds. Now getting the defensive tower up. And Chateau can maybe transition into the archer skirmisher composition, which actually is a bit better than skirmisher scouts if he micros it correctly. Yeah, I think he needs to wait a little bit longer. He's also in a position to wait as he's placed a tower here next to his farms. He's walled up everything else on the right-hand side that's also completely closed, though I don't think he's confident in that as he's building a house. So Leary probably wants to take a fight now before the scouts are no longer relevant, and he's running across the map to do so. A Tata will probably just stay in his base. If you compare the economy, there's just a one villager difference. Both players are getting wheelbarrow, though. Tato's a little bit ahead. So the big thing is, still, Leary can absolutely put the pressure on because he has Fletching, getting padded archer armor. Yep. He has a more mobile army. He can dictate the game. Tato needs to sit back at home and still no blacksmith out. Yeah, I, I think he knew his economy is behind, so he's just trying to get the farms up earlier so he can not delay that castle age time too much. But he needs the blacksmith, and... Until he gets that upgrade, he's going to be penned in his base. And I think he understands that he's building a house wall here. Leary, meanwhile, at home, you know, he's completely fine. His economy is not being touched. This is a perfect position for a player here, especially on Gold Rush when you need that map control. To yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. You could not be more right here. The problem is, even if Tato holds and he's not taking any damage, most likely, the thing is, Leary will be on the map. And if we go into that Castle Age transition where we will see a lot of archer skirms out here for Tato, Leary is the one who can get the mangonels on the hill in the middle. So this is a very interesting move. You'll see this on your screen at home. Leary's trying to run in. Tato has walled him out, and he's actually going for a counter. So he's going to try and do damage now. Leary might be expecting this because there's no defensive army from Tato. Hesitant to try and run into this base for good reason. Tato's on the hill, and, well, he's going to see the scouts. So Leary's actually using his scouts, which probably aren't going to mean much to him anymore to actually scout, believe it or not, and not fight. And that, that works out for him because he's going to be able to address that, create a couple more skirmishers. He, did you realize he was too stable? Leary's yeah, also too only, stable. Oh, too stable. So he will go oh, for he's the up. Pick. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we don't have bloodlines yet, no plus one defense, but it seems like he will go on to, yeah, heavy, heavy knights here. Now getting the gold mining upgrade and not going for the crossbow war. And if he goes for like knights with plus two, some skirmishes and even a mangonel, Tetsuma's army isn't looking too great anymore. Yeah, it's going to be very expensive for Leary, but his economy has been safe for most of this game. I believe he's going to go for Elite Skirmisher and Knights, which is the perfect combo. The Skirmishers are there to counter any Archers, the Knights are there to counter any Skirmishers, and they also pack quite a punch. So with the better economy for Leary and the better uptime, I think he will have time to hold the middle. Question is, what should he do with that aggression? If he's able to hold the middle, should he go out to the middle? Like, how should he treat this? It's... Uh, 
depends a bit on what Tato is going for. If Tato stays on mass crossbow man, if he is maybe adding a stable himself, what, which he is, as we can see, if he's maybe going for some teach workshops, you need to readjust on so many levels. The thing is, controlling the middle is always great. Yeah, and players at this point, like Tato, for example, he probably recognizes that he's clicked up, or it's possible he's clicked up. They don't want to lose their army before those upgrades. So Army is looping around for Leary because he knows the Castle Age upgrade's on the way. But this is kind of a risky move sometimes. You don't know what your opponent has, but he is right in guessing that it's only archers and skirmishers. He may even see the stables here. Look at that, he's seen one stable, so he confirms that Tata will be doing a similar build, a similar choice to go for two stables. And I, I like the move because normally on a map when you have three golds in your base, you don't need to be as aggressive. But on Gold Rush, that gold is dwindling around this time. And even a forward villager for Leary, Siege Workshop on that hill. Siege Workshop on that hill, that's so, so good. But now we have to compare compositions. So it will be elite skirmishers, knights, and mangonels against mainly crossbows and knights. So Teto very vulnerable to big mangonel shots here, but in general his army composition could be a bit stronger here. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Tato's up later to the Castle Age. Leary has to make sure he doesn't squander that advantage. Because if Tato, for example, has more resources, can get more knights, and will have crossbow, Leary's knights might be meaningless if he doesn't have upgrades, and he does not at the moment. Well, he does, but no, um, no plus two from Castle Age. And one other thing we have to mention, we are always talking about two gold spots for each player, but that's not really the case for Tato. His main gold spot, the four tile, only 1.4k gold left in that one. And the other one, at the moment, not really accessible because he has so little map control. Uh, well, I'm looking at Tatsu's resources a little bit imbalanced. He has the gold, of course, he will be going for upgrades on these crossbows. Uh, there will be crossbows here in a moment. And he's going to be creating knights as well. He needs to take a fight now. It's not necessarily that he can die to this attack from Leary. It's that he can lose a lot of crucial map control. So he's getting those upgrades now, crossbow and bod can arrow. And he'll have enough for the knights, but those skirmishers will be rough to deal with. Yeah, that's true, but the knights could do the job. He needed to build a market because his resources were so off balance. But I think he's grouping up and look at the army count as well. He is heavily in favor, but it might all come down to that one single mangonel maybe positioned on a hill. And that's, that's the one thing that can change an entire game. Because map control is so crucial at this point, Atato's going to push up the hill and try and fight downhill against this Maganel. If Leary's Maganel is a bust, it doesn't do anything, that's a lot of crossbows and more knights will be on the way for Tato. So this is very important for both players. And the beautiful thing, we're not focusing on the economies behind this. So they're, they're focusing on all this at this level. They're going to take a big fight in the middle, micro all their units, getting the upgrades. And one big problem now for Leary is, the Mangonel is so good, but he doesn't really have the greatest protection. He only has knights and skirmishes himself, and those two knights, if Tito wanted to commit, could actually kill that Mangonel. So we will see how it goes. The monastery added for Leary as well, and now the dance begins. Yeah, and Leary, unfortunately, is going to be firing this uphill if he engages Tato's army where it's at currently. And Tato knows if he engages Leary, he will be fighting uphill, and that hill advantage is huge in this game. So I almost feel like Leary will camp the hill. He's creating monks now, which is a beautiful move to get any knights that might run in to go after his Maganel. Uh, Tato's going to have to mass a lot more. So I think he's going to wait and make sure that fight is effective. Meanwhile, giving Leary some time to get some upgrades on these knights. And it's so funny how both have like, huge armies, kind of open maps, not very high village accounts. But look at the KD. It's 4, 6, 6, 5. They're, like... Gaia was nearly as effective as Tato here in this game. I mean, <laughs> statistically speaking, the Wolves are actually doing a pretty good job here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Ballistic's now on the way for Tato. Really wants to get those arrow even more efficient. Going for the Mangonauts and going for the run around. Let's see if Liri has any idea about this. Uh, what do you think about this decision? It's almost similar to what we saw before. So this is what Leary can see. He cannot see the army. Leary's army is just camping in the middle, waiting for Tato. So what are your thoughts about this? Do you think this is a good move? Uh, it's really tough to judge. The thing is, Leary has a hill there, so it's pretty much impossible for Tato to ta attack into it. But what can he really do here? Yeah, he might snipe some villagers, but then he's always super clumped up against all kinds 
like against Magnolia's attacks. There is so much more mobile with a bigger amount of crossbows. I'm not even sure if he can enter there killing those palisades. Yeah, uh, if Taz is able to get a couple walls up behind here, and there he goes for it now, this could be devastating for him. He took a risk to try and do some damage. In my opinion, yeah, he should probably run away here. It might have been better to go in to the right of this market, attack the palisade real fast and run in. But still, regardless, he's going to be where Leary knows he is, going to be closer to Leary's reinforcements. And now Leary has a hill. Both players have knights. The skirmishers are there. And the Maganels are on the way as well. So for now, Tato's fine, but he's running back towards Leary's base. So he's going to need to take an effective fight. Oh, he's waiting for the plus two defense here. Does not have bloodlines, an upgrade that Leary has here. Tato cannot really go to the right hand side he will always need to fight uphill he has ballistic so that's very good for him we'll get some kills against Leary but nice splits of him skirmishes around and that might be the first real engagement in this game all right well this is Leary's point of view he sees the crossbows I'll quickly switch to Tato's point of view for the stream because Tato doesn't okay he does see the Maganels now but he has no way out he has to take down these Maganels with the Knights or something he has to take an engagement also, he'd be running in a very small choke point on this pond if he tries to run away. And there's the Maganel shot from Leary. This is so incredibly close, it could be huge! And there still could be more shots here, but the Maganels, at least one Maganel will go down. Two Maganels will go down. Still a lot of skirmishers there. Tato's actually done quite well here, Nilly, but he's still trapped. But he has no knights left, look at that! We have Leary sending in three monks from behind. He got all the converts and Tato now trying to retreat. Not fearing any more Magnol shot, at least for now. But look at that, all his knights going down. He's trying to retreat to the left hand side, but Skirmish is still super efficient. Leary can still go for the chase. And the next Magnol would be unanswered because Tato does not really have a counter to that. Yeah, and honestly, I'm very impressed with how Tato was able to get out of that situation. I thought everything was going to die, but. Oh, that's a <laughs> Maganel of Tato. Yeah, a Maganel of Tato's coming in. Unfortunately, Leary has the knights there. Uh, maybe Tato can get, get a shot off quickly. Uh, no, he cannot. I mean, at this point, I'm looking at the economy. Leary, behind all of this, has had a much stronger economy, and that's been the theme for quite a while. And he has a TC up in the middle as well. Tato at the same time going for his second gold spot. And Leary is adding more knights. That will be just into the face of Tato. He might even, even need to switch on some. Yeah, I, probably the Harvard attack, which is Spikeman in this case. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Tato needs to do damage. And Leary has a stronger economy. Leary has the map control in the middle. He's fortifying that area, adding more stables, has the economy to make more plus two knights. And so there needs to be an answer. There needs to be a response from Tato. Unfortunately, these crossbows are not going to contribute much. He's not making any more. He recognizes that. His resources are also quite low. So Leary has done a fantastic job at this point. Uh, and like Tato was heavily ahead when it came to the army amount, but now Liri is still with a better tech, Mangonels, Knights, completely fully upgraded, has hand call as well. <sighs> I'm not sure what Tato can really do to cl cl climb that hill, control the gold, because that's what he needs to do within the next two, three minutes. Yeah, I mean, he's not on stone either, so potentially he could make a push with a castle. But he's not on stone, he does not have the time for that. Leary has the numbers, he's also getting a husbandry, so he'll be able to chase these that much more effectively. More skirmishers and monks coming in. Leary's already ahead, but if he's able to take this fight effectively, this could be the game. Yeah, and he can absolutely take just any even fights, maybe even slide them with plenty worse fights, because he has the gold control. It feels like Tato needs to focus on all those monks doing a beautiful job there, but there's no real counter. Leary's number still looking pretty nice here. And Tato with maybe six knights against maybe ten to the life of Leary. He is pushing in so strong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, with the skirmishers falling behind, I think Leary will clean this up. There's only crossbows left. Now, oh, I'm sorry, there's a couple nights left for Tato, but he does not have the resources. Look at the population difference, 115 for the kid, 81 for Tato. More upgrades coming in for Leary as well, so... At, I, say, at the same time, second goes, but only has 800 gold left for Tato. He needs to make something happen here within, like, the now, last seconds. But look at that military count for the first time. Leary is ahead. And that's the GG right there. Damn! Leary with a very untypical for him scout tech. Tato kind of blind countered it by going like MA aggression, which is totally fine, and then only went for skirms because he thought, okay, my enemy will go for probably the arch attack, or my MA will do a lot of damage. 
but neither happened. Don't let them choose green and blue again. You can, can't tell the difference on the screen. OK. OK. So um, villager, the boom was so much better for Liri as well. 30 villagers ahead without really killing a lot of Tato. But look at that KD as well. Yeah, it, it all started with his economy choices and strategy choice as well. Uh, both players had open maps, so Leary just wadded off quickly, went scouts, and took advantage of Tato's open map. Tato wasn't able to secure his base at all that game. He was playing catch-up most of that game, unfortunately. Uh, beautiful play from Leary. We didn't know how this guy was going to come out here in game one. Big stage, first really big tournament for a lot of players to come to Gamescom like this, and it was exceptional. It would be the biggest prize money they ever gotten if yeah. they maybe it is the best, biggest prize for both of them actually qualifying here yeah and yeah they really really punishing the bad map here of Tito who needed to build a defensive tower needed to wall so much and couldn't get the walls up in time yeah and that's pretty much it it was exceptional game from Leary we're gonna get game two going shortly Okay. Okay, then let, let's take a look at the military count here. As we said before, the KT is so much better here for Leary, fighting off against a lot of more weaker units, but the numbers were pretty nice for Tato here. The eco, so much more convincing for Leary, though. And yeah, that was probably the thing that baffled me the most. Tato, if I have to name like one top player who isn't like super consistent with the Stark Age, it probably has to be Tato, and it really. Yeah, hurt him this time again. Yeah, and all the other factors we talked about being here on the big stage. Maybe got to him there, but we will have the next game coming up. Next game will be Tato's home map. Indeed, and yeah, now we have to rake our brains. What will he go for? Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised. if there's any player that's going to bounce back. Like, I mean, it's of course one game. I think Tato is going to do an exceptional job here in this next game. It's his home map. He knows the sieves. He knows the maps probably more than any other player. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what we have in store. I I'm kind of expecting islands, honestly. Oh, but 100%. 100%. Yeah, Tato, he's done well in this event by us utilizing water maps. I, I think there's no statistics, but I'm going to guess that 90% of the water maps he's won. Yeah. Someone, like someone get those statistics, please. <laughs> back to you on that. Okay, I was a bit late on the hosting here, but now we should be fine jumping into the next map. And they already did the civilization vetoes, they're fine, and yeah, Oof, let's see. Tato, uh, you need to get online again. Crowd, still. Oh, well they arranged. Oh, am I? Mm. They're not covering me now. Yeah, I'm going. We will do that. So, Viper giving his feedback as well. The guy in the white there. Now that's T90 looking at the screen here. I don't know where the cameras are just yet, so don't get my bad. Cameras side over there. <laughs> And we have Tato with a, I believe, what is it? It's Cougar keyboards here. And he's just playing with the standard keyboards. He didn't want to bring his own, didn't want to play with his own Yeah, I, I, that's oh, actually it. something we didn't talk about. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, Tato traveled with a keyboard that was made ages ago, for lack of a better word. And uh, unable to use that here today. But I saw him playing yesterday and he seemed to be playing quite well. Um, so the yeah, next game will be coming up. That's interesting. Tato was asking, do we really need to do the hosting for the civilizations? I think they <laughs> should. Yeah, uh, okay, they should maybe do it. Yes. They can just agree playing Italians. Then that's what they will be going for. And should we ask them to switch different colors? It felt like green and blue was pretty I would, I would prefer that they switch colors because, yes, yes. We, we should switch mm -hmm. the colors? Okay. Yeah. Just to make it easier for you guys to see at home, I think we should so do that. Should we maybe ask 
someone to go for purple. I think that should be pretty nice. So, um, purple, um, you're writing? Okay. So, uh, we got some feedback that it was tough to judge the um, amount of knights in the last game sometimes. So, we'll fix the colors a bit and now will be the very classical blue and red like we want it to be. And when T90 clicks in, we can start into game number two. Here, the home map of... Tato, he's trailing the 1-0, but should be a huge favorite here on his own home map. And yeah, we fixed all the FP issues. Seems like players seem to be ready here as well. And then we are jumping into this game. This time, Tato in the blue trunks, Liri in the red trunks. And we are going yes. live. All right, so it's Islands. Islands, Italian war, indeed. All right, so we have Tato in the blue playing as the Italians, and really no surprise here, Liri is in the red playing as Italians as well. I'm going to quickly adjust the scroll speed. I had many complaints. People said okay, there. Okay, so Go for ahead. everyone who does not know the map, Islands, basically, yeah, everyone's starting on their own island. Lots of water surrounding you, and yeah, winning the water gives you just a huge advantage. You can fish endlessly, increase your eco, can raid the enemy island, but in the end, whoever wins the land is actually the winner of the game. Yeah, it, it's very interesting because the build orders are completely different. We actually talked about this yesterday, Nilly, where normally it's three on wood to start on Arabia. Could do four on wood and include some different variations. One villager, adding an extra villager going to five on wood, changes your build order entirely, and it's for a completely different map. So again, there's going to be a lot of aggression on water here, and it's mainly because that fish are so important. Absolutely. The, that's like so true for 30 civilizations that you just mentioned. Actually, for Italians, you can make an argument for putting form wood since your fishing ships are so much cheaper and you yeah. save that extra wood. And let's see how heavily they will go into that fishing, how many populations they will choose to click up and yeah how early they will switch into what sort of yeah, war galley or warship here. Yeah, and it's going back to what we said about Tato, if any player would be able to change that build order and know to do that, it's going to be Tato. He plays this civs nonstop for as long as they've been out, and they're relatively new in comparison to AOC expansion, which was in 2001. <laughs> so with, with a lot of these new civs, there's a lot to learn. The meta that we have today is because of years and years of play, uh, which is what makes this more exciting because it can and be I some different variations. super important is also to see in all the qualification stages, we have the map Team Islands. And this time it's Islands. The big difference is really the distance to your enemy. And nice baller here. And so most of the time you just spam fire galleys and mix in some diminution ship to counter them. But here, I wouldn't be surprised to see some fire galleys and then a way earlier switch into real galleys because the distance is so much longer and you can really utilize like big amounts and out micro your enemies so much easier. That's a very good point. So I didn't touch on the distance or at least show it on the screen much. There's two small islands in the middle and these two small islands will be important later in this game. But right now, all that means is they're going to have to Across this, there's a lot of distance in between. There's a lot more possibility for Leary, for example, to, well, do that. It's really not that bad. It, there's two. I mean, it's it's not good. He needs deep fish next to his docks. But if you look at his dock, he does have one to the right and the left. He will be adding more docks, so hopefully for him, he will have a couple more deep fish to find later on. Yeah, that's so true. But still. If we compare that to Tato, he will have uh, so much better dog, most likely. Oh, the boar here of Leary. Uh, really yeah, to uh, it's going to go the other way. It, it's just not cooperating with him. Second boar now. Looks like a pretty solid build up by both. A bit of an earlier dog here, as it seems, by Leary. Let's take a look at the Tato stock placement. He is building it way more to the right hand side and doesn't have a fishing ship out yet. Well, it's interesting because Tato's also just now bringing in his second boar. So Leary was ahead on the boards. And 
It's not that Leary's ahead in the game, but he just happened to get the boards in earlier and the dock up earlier. Sometimes you can't afford to do that. We talked about the cheap fishing ships for Italians. Unfortunately, Leary does have that fishing ship earlier, but he's not finding that deep fish. He hasn't chosen to scout just a couple tiles. Mm. That's going to hurt him. Tatso is going to be later, but he will have the deep fish. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate for sure. And I believe since... No, let's not talk. Um, yeah, and now the deep fish is so much better here for Tato. Population for both 18. Another fishing ship queued up, as we can see. And yeah, players should be pretty close to clicking up. And remember, Italians do not need the 500 food. But for them, with a bonus, only 425 food. So we will most likely see people clicking up with 25 population here. Yeah, and once they click up, they will no longer need that food. The fishing ships they have will be able to supply the amount of food they need to create villagers, and everything else will go to what? Everything else will go, well, three or four to go to gold. Very different approaches here. Look at that. We see Lyria already on the way to Feudal Age. Tato at the same time is adding another house. So he might go up to even pop 26, maybe even pop 27, and will play it more heavily on the eco, but slower. Uh, yeah, there's a difference here. There's, there's one more villager for Tato and the fishing ship count. Well, it's going to favor Tato regardless because he has the deep fish. It's three to four at the moment. Yeah, Tato will get another fishing ship as well. So it will be four for him compared to the four of Liri as well, as you said. But mm, that deep fish is just so, so important. Tato playing it a bit slower, but it's not 100% sure how easy it will be for Liri to punish that timing. Well, he's going to dock next to two deep fish, so he might actually realize this once the dock. Yeah, yeah he's already I mean, aware. So he has deep fish. Uh, the choke points will be interesting in the middle. I think when they engage in these small choke points, uh, Liri, he doesn't have a lot of room to run here, uh, but maybe they could dance around the small island. Uh, Tato. He's in the corner, so he's going to have a bit more time. Maybe that extra villager will pay off. It'll have the time he'll get away with it. Uh, there's a villager going to build another dock. One thing's for sure, Tato has the best fish that you could have in this game. <laughs> Maybe Leary could have ventured to the right, but that's unreasonable. Oh, so, a huge man. benefit for Tato, who, in my opinion, is the better water player. Yeah, probably. Uh, being in the finals of Masters of Island there as well. So accomplished over the years. And as you said, incredible win rate. And now we can see Fire Galley skewed up here for Liri. And I believe that will be the unit of choice for the start. But then, especially with that small island, or the gold island blocking here, the transition into Galleys is real. That's a very good point. And a little bit of a head start for Liri. I'm going to look at Tato again. He's going to be building his docks with the same thing. Again, I think we'll have time. Resources seem to be very close. Liri was just on two docks a moment ago when I looked. And now, of course, he's building his third, just as Tato is building his third. So small variation in the build-up with the boars, uh, maybe the early dock, but pretty even now. They I'll don't know where each other are, though. They have the scout. Yeah, absolutely. And Fire Galley is not like having the greatest vision. Like, not super fast, but seems like Liri is instantly going for the right direction here. And Tato has queued up a galley, so maybe he thinks he has time. He's gone two fire galleys, oh. he's going with the demolition raft, and uh, actually two more galleys in two out of its three docks. So Liri finds Tato. Sometimes you can dance all around the map and not find a guy, so it's very good for Liri, but better start to this engagement for Tato. He's chasing Liri away. Liri needs to wait for reinforcements. And losing a lot of HP there, engaging a bit too long to be won, but then pulls back and yeah, it's interesting. I thought that would go for fire galleys a bit longer. Tato now queuing up in demo raft as well and going for the galleys. On the other side, Liri still completely on the fire galley tag. Maybe not adjusting to 100% to this <laughs> like very small difference of the map compared to Team Islands, but significant enough. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? I like the fact that Tato's running out now to try and damage uh, Leary. He does have a weak fire galley, but yeah, he's still running out. We'll see if Leary's able to trap him. There's a demolition raft coming out of this dock now, Nilly. And there are a few fires there for Leary. I think Tato overextended a bit there. I, I, I like aggression, but it just doesn't make much sense. Of course, this small island doesn't help. There's the demo ship, and that's going to be the end of that fire galley for Tato, and the other one wasted. And back at Tato's fish... Uh, I think he's fine for now, but he is transitioning to the early galleys, so maybe as he masses them, he can take some fights. Yeah, the demo raft, absolutely a good option. Two fishing ship idle, by the way, at the time. Oh, Liri now. Oh, uh, yeah, he's that. He heard you. And 
now the dance will really start. We need Fletching, which is on the way for Tattoo, getting some nice kills done. At the moment, KD 2 2, Villagers dead even, both with the same amount of army and fishing ship. It could not be more even when it comes to numbers, but the unit choices. And now Tattoo needs to micro. The good thing is, though, we are playing this offline, so the micro should absolutely be on point. Yeah, and I like what Leary has done here. If you noticed on the minimap, he had two of his fire guys just sitting and waiting for this moment. He's going to get a couple extra shots. It's as if he planned this, but there's a demo ship now from Tato. And there's the shot. That was only the sound file, I believe. <laughs> and yeah, just to bait it a bit. And now he's going in again, and that will be uh, there we one go. kill there that we go. damage. So good stuff for here, and the dance continues. And that will be interesting. Is Leary switching away? It seems like he is queuing up only fire galley, so he will stay on that tag. Interesting stuff. And now we will see really how the water triangle develops because a lot of people think at the start galleys aren't really an option. But I believe like if you have some distance and some micro, they're absolutely viable. As you can see now, fighting the 6v1 pretty nice. But another flank from the right hand side. Is Leary maybe able to trap all those galleys? It's looking good for him. This is a beautiful move. He saw these small islands. He's taking advantage of them right away. This is the second time he's done this. Tato is trying to get the crucial mass of galleys. He's trying to push out, but Leary has trapped him once again. I think this is probably the time for Leary to transition a bit into galleys. He doesn't want to delay that too long as Tato's just showing what he can do when he's not trapped. Yeah. But this has been an exceptional game for both players thus far. So close. Yeah, absolutely nice. Sneak move there. I'm not really sure about the transition because if you try to play against galleys now and you start with like one galley and he already has ten, you cannot like really do the same strategy like the, your enemy and catch up. Oh, and now the demo ref can do so much. Let's take a look at the thing. Oh, only attacking one. Yeah, and again, Leary trying to perform that trap. Tato's a little bit wise to it. Uh, he's gonna, yeah, focus down the weak fire galley. And you're right, it, it is certainly an investment to transition. Now the economies are also important. Leary's getting closer to that castle age click as his tattoo. He's a little bit behind in resources at the moment. But neck and neck, a uh, population, neck and neck as well. Leary does have two more villagers. A tattoo might be able to change the population if he's able to get his galleys forward a little bit more. Some weak galleys there though, Nilly. Leary even selling 100 stone there to increase his gold count to click up a bit earlier. And yeah, but it's still like so tough for him to really take any engagement. As you can see, every time he closes the distance with this two range fire galley setup, just can easily go back. And as we said before, like the micro offline off the toe is just incredible. Yeah, it, it really is. And Leary's been wise to that though. He hasn't overinvested too often. I can't help but feel that Tato is scared to run in this area. You'll notice Leary sending some units to the right. It could be for a raid. But that also could be to come behind the galleys from Tato once again. And Tato uh, being tricky and trying to get a, a weak fire galley again. But Leary's well ahead with this castle age upgrade. And Tato. Ooh, I assume he's close. Sneak two galleys through at the left hand side and is annoying. The fishing ship did kill some of them. And now it will be most likely two fish. Oh no, two! Look at that! Two fishing ships survived with five HP on the left hand side. Right hand side, another fight though. Uh, yeah, I mean, very close there with these fishing ships. They are idle at the moment, but Leary sent these three forward to delay Tato's fish. And meanwhile, his navy is at home because he wants to get those upgrades. So this is, I mean, unfortunate moment for Leary, but a little bit longer now for Tato as he's had to run these fishing ships away, but luckily he has this deep fish. Nice demo shot. Uh, but truthfully, yeah, I don't think Kelly. And just to take a look at the KD here, 14 to 6. And that's just like both people building units with the same cost, so it's not like we can say, yeah, he built the, the weaker uh, um, units and mangano shots were affecting it. It's like super costly at the moment, and the army value of Tato is just so much better here. So when these upgrades come in, there's going to be a small window for Leary, and I think Tato recognizes that he's going to try and micro down as many units as possible. Do you, what do you think Leary should be focusing on? Should he go for the fish again? Should he go for the main army? Is, <sighs> There are so many questions we have at the moment. Uh, it is so tough. He's trying to set up another trap. He has four dogs, so the production is good. Instantly carry nearing and war galley. So he really wants to yeah, get the damage out and reduce the damage taken here. But Tato 
just won't take a fight. Is running around, is trying to groove at the right hand side, is fleeing at the left hand side. Leary at the moment with the whole map control. Maybe that could have been the timing to sneak three crossbows over. And that, that would be a good idea, certainly. Uh, just to double check, you don't see a range yet, right? No, 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 no range. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it always is a possibility. I think it'll be difficult because of the small islands here and because players are so active in the middle. Leary sending a part of his navy to the left, attacking Tato now, and Tato will wait for his upgrades. And the rest of the navy going towards Tato's docks. Now, I think Leary should probably take an engagement against the, the navy of Tato. He doesn't need to go after these docks. I think he needs to go for the fish and for the units. And then he can get the docks after he wins the engagement. So far, it's pretty good for him. Tato doesn't have a massive galleys back at home. Tato's being chased. Yeah, he needs a micro there. And Liri just so active on the map. He's redocking at the south as well to get better fish. We have him on five docks pretty soon. Getting horse color, so his eco will be very good when it comes to the farming as well. And it's still so annoying. And Tato is really not getting the big numbers in. And maybe you can see a trap in the north here. Four fire galleys from the left hand side. Another flock at the right hand side. Wow. And this is not the first time we've said this in this game. This is not your typical game. Leary is going to trap. Now, Tato, of course, could micro these units down, but there's going to be four on the right. There will be four on the left. And let's see how this goes. I love the move. With careening, these ships will be a little bit stronger. And uh, Tato has yet to be able to do much with his navy in the cast lane. He's just been running. And there's a demo shot. Yeah, demo coming there from the rescue. And the fire galleys just slightly slightly slower here in the back if they would have been in the fight they could have gotten at least three war galleys more nice snipe here and not or not nice oh. like fighting and that good move to send in the demos for tato he is going to clean this up eventually i believe it's so hard to call because there's so many ships in this small choke point Generally, like fire galleys are the ones of Leary here, but those Timorefs just scare them away so ha so nicely. Maybe we should take a look at the TC's edit because now we can see Leary having two, and at the same time we see Dirty C being added by Tato, and two people taking so different approaches, and the game is still super even. Yeah, and they're. 45 and 46 for villagers. Army a little bit ahead for Leary. I feel as though Tato. He needs to mass at home again. I mean, his army was caught out once or twice. I think he needs to mass at home. He knows more fires are coming. If he goes out, he may lose his fish at home or his one fishing ship. <laughs> but yeah. this, we're going to see Imperial Age in this game at this rate, Nilly. And every decision leading up to that is so important to make sure your economy is right. Make sure your military number is high enough. Yeah, Imperial Age most likely to throw beautiful back micro here. And... Yeah, no one like really able to do any killing blows. Village accounts still very even, but Liri was double the army amount here at the moment. Uh, he does. The downside is these ships can be micered for Tato, and he is utilizing a couple demos to try and turn the tide a little bit. Uh, that's a, a kind of a messy engagement at the start for Tato. That demo ship has not done anything. Oh, and in come more here. units for Liri. Ooh. When will he stop? <laughs> yeah. So many traps. Damn, Liri is so active and he has so much map control. I have an overlay here which shows the value. At the moment, Liri, 2.5k of army on the map. Tato on the other side, only 700. Yeah, uh, Liri's taken much better fights. And he knows that now he will add fishing ships from that dock on the south. And, you know, economy's running well as on the uh, mainland. And I think. You know, again, Tato's been looking for a response, but I don't know how he's going to do it unless he goes fires himself now, and he's so outnumbered. Going galleys is not going to work when he's lost the mass he's had, and the demo ships are a one-and-done unit. So, though you can get a big explosion, that's it. You can use fire ships and use war galleys constantly if you micro them correctly. Yeah, uh, building a lot of demos, mainly demos now, but they're oh, super clumped up here for Tato as well. And Liri just so active on the map, just saying to fog of war and Take a look at the mini-map. So many dots all over the map for Liri. Super active. Look at that. Surrounding the island, moving everywhere, patrolling. He does not want to get landed. He's killing the dogs. Incredible macro here by Liri. Yeah, I think Liri not only is trying to stop a sneak from happening, because Tato could go for a sneak, but he's also trying to stop 
Tata from redocking and getting fish because he knows on the right side he's all but denied that. So this is excellent map awareness from the kid. And I don't know, I'm very impressed with his play thus far in the first two games. The thing is, now Tato lost all his war galleys. He's switching onto fire galleys himself. He's getting some nice demo hits in here, and that's what he needs to come back. Still, six army behind, but it was more. I, I think, I think it, it, economy is so much more important now uh, on the mainland. If you can get up to M fast in Tato situation and redock, then you can win if you get the Imperial Age text first. Uh, though he doesn't have the numbers, though Leary has been taking the better fights, if the economy can be right, then Tato has, has plenty of chance to win this game. And his economy is looking good. He's housed at the moment, which is not the best. He's fixed that. 400 food, 300 gold, good eco balance. We look at Leary. Leary's a little bit behind on those numbers. Well, a bit in villagers, but at the moment it's still six fishing ships to none. So Lyra's Eco is a bit better, military a bit better for him as well. Tato trying to get more dogs up. The just the production is so much better for Lyra as well. He's sitting at a solid five dogs compared to only three, having all the map control. And yeah, when it comes to looking into Imperial Age, we can see Lyra at the time only 100. At the same time, Tato looking at 600 food, 500 gold. And I believe he went for those town centers and farms a little bit earlier, so it might be paying off. And production's quite good for Tato. I would say that Leary is probably considering sending some of the units he has patrolling around to the main fight. Because if you look at the military count, it is a bit deceiving because not everything is here for Leary. While for Tato, every single unit, with the exception of the scout, is going to be taking this fight. Finally, Leary is switching back onto the demons as well and doing some nice, de 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 nice damage here. Yeah, there's, there's the demo shot. And there's the Imperial Age upgrade for Tato. Just as we expected, he's going to click up first, and he does have a place to dock. He never lost his docks, he just lost control of that general area. Tato could swing this back into his favor in the Imperial Age. Just, just look at that, it's so weird. It's 21 army for Liri, 11 for Tato, and guess who's pushing? Yeah. It's the guy with the bigger balls. I mean, maybe the demos are scaring Liri a little bit. There's been so many, you, you never know how that's going to trade. I do think Liri probably should have been a little bit more aggressive. He likes these choke points, though. He's been sitting in them this entire game with units. I'm going to look at the economy. So Tato, you know, he is down six villagers, but he has the imp tech coming in. Uh, Leary is getting close to clicking up, but this is, there's going to be a big difference in time here. Yeah, he can easily sell the stone now and should be clicking up any second. We can hear Tato now picking up a relic, so thinking about the very long game. And now we see another trap. If he would have had some army more left on the left-hand side, Liri, that is. At the moment, he's just chasing. Maybe he can kill all the army of Tato before reaching a privilege. Demo shot. Uh, the demo's chasing, and Tato recognizes that. He's trying to split up his units. Uh, that, that's a decent shot there with that demo. I will say that prior to that, Tato killed Two, three units of Leary's uncontested. Uh, of course, Tato's throwing away a few now. There's a demo uh, getting close to killing that. A lot of weak galleys for both players. And how is Tato doing that? Only five army behind now. Oh, and look at the upgrade tag. Tato Kondo basically on the way. Ah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was looking for something in the docks. But, oh, wait. You can fight on land, too. Well, Leary... I'm so torn. He's pushing a little bit on the right now. Of course, Tato will get the upgrades. Tato's sending the remainder of his navy behind Leary's base. Uh, what a game here. So we have scale mail armor, which is an infantry upgrade on the way for Leary. Oi, yo, yo, yo. So fast fires at the moment. The tag choice here of Leary. So Tato investing so heavily in water. Finally, it's 18 to 18 army back. Tato, he will take that water fight. He will push back now. And the same time, he's obviously not focusing on the land and the sneaky surprise could be waiting him. I, I'm, I'm waiting for it myself. Oh, oh I see it. Oh. It's right there. So Tato will see it as well. Uh, yeah, Tato actually has... Uh, he is actually building condos at his home base. He's already prepared for that. He has an outpost there. And if he actually looks at it, he can defend it so easily. At the same time, we have Liri still not on Imperial Age. And the condos are coming in. Tato's warning against it. And that landing will be stopped. 
<laughs> look at the look at the walls. He's gonna try and keep this one barracks up. Tato's walling in the barracks though. So this is kind of useless. And this is huge. This is huge. Tato has Same the time, water big advantage. Fight out. Let's take a look. Very nice number Maybe here he for Larry. He will advantage. take the focus. But at the same time, Tato, 25 military compared to the 15. Larry now obviously losing some villagers here at the front. Tato being very annoying around. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking better and better for Tato after a very rough start. Now his fast fire micro and maybe the condos can give him the W. Uh, it's so close because now fast fire will, well, wait for it, but Leary will get fast fire. There's quite a few weak fast fires for Tato. Leary's still keeping the production up, but Tato now has more army. There's fast fire for both players, and that's going to force Tato to run away, so almost perfect timing for Leary. Of course, the landing failed. A Tato could do the same. So every single battle on water actually affects what players can do on land. And man, this is quite a game. Liri is now going for ballistics. Does that mean he wants to go into the Galleon tank? That's a bit surprising to me because they are still at quite low numbers and Fire Galleon is still super busy. I would have loved to see more Demos here and yeah, Tato going for ballistics as well. Yeah, I, it looks like Liri is getting a little bit cramped. Tato's just, he doesn't want to run in all the way next to these docks between this choke point, but he is engaging and he continues to run back after favorable engagements. And Leary needs to get the numbers, and I agree. You know, fast fire is so strong. The transition now is a risk. It's almost like earlier in the game when he stayed fires. I feel like he should do that now. A scale mail for Tato, so he might be thinking about landing some condos. Yeah, he has some prepared. He's building a transporter here at the left hand side, and the landing will be very evil. Leary reacting to that by building some stonewalls on his main island. We will see the big engagement here on the water now. By the way, both players have enough stones for the castle. Huge demo shot there for Leary. That was incredible. Still, Tato has plenty of numbers. He's not using all of his numbers effectively, though. Both players are going to be Leary. Oh, man. I just did it. Going to be Leary of the sneak. <laughs> but we'll see if the transport is going to be more effective for Tato. Oh, and Leary built a castle, but did he lead it? Maybe he wants to get the castle up at that very crucial point here at the Gold Island where we see so many big engagements. But Tato already preparing the castle himself. Maybe we can see the trap tennis. It's a very crucial area. I believe Leary should be able to get that castle up because there's no real ranged units to deny those villagers from finishing it. Yeah, I, I want more demos, Nilly. I want more demos. Demos would be such a good oh, thing. Oh, we are at the There we go! That's a good demo, and another one's coming in as well. This is forcing Leary back. Now, Tata sending oh, two God, more. So good. Oh, oh my God. gosh, it's incredible. The castle will go up for Leary. Tato has the numbers. Unfortunately, he will be pushed back in a moment, I think, once this castle goes up. He's going to have to think of something else to do. Uh, also, that transport may come in any moment now, but Tato killing many, many units now. I think Leary's regretting that he did not go for a heavy demo. Yeah, more demos would have been so much better. Now we can see final fletching ring research and that castle is firing so many arrows. Not really a chance for Tato to take any real fights here in the fishing ship, even debating a bit as well. <laughs> and what can Tato really do? He needs to go for some traps on his main island and he's preparing the condo landing there. Yeah, and he does have the traps. Now the question is, does this range? I don't think that would range. I, I say not, it does. I'm not used to, I mean, the monitor is so huge, I'm going to make myself an excuse here, but I don't know, everything just seems different here. The tiles are so much bigger. Yeah, it looks like he is able to range. Very fortunate for him that he's able to do so because this castle provides so much cover for Leary. And yeah, that, that treb is going to be fine. Castle will be focused down. Leary might go for his own trebuchet. But man, this has been quite a game for Islands. We still haven't seen those condos venture over to Leary's base yet. Leary trying to sneak some fires around, but nice defense here by Tato. He's still adding more to my ship. And yeah, we will just see so many more fast fires since Italians don't have the heavy demo upgrade. No repair on that castle, though. That's a bit questionable to me. Leary still has 900 stone and refuses to repair that castle here. Yeah, it's a good point. That castle's providing so much for him. It's basically a beefy military unit at this point. He's not using for anything else. He's gonna try and make a trebuchet. I think he'll be okay. Oh, no, he's uh -oh. not okay. Man, there has to be so much regret for Leary now. 
Oh, he's still getting a lot of gold there, trying to get an outpost to get more vision. No Galleon tech here for Lyria, and now the Contos are coming to the left-hand side, but the castle for Lyria. Yeah, uh, I mean, the castle's up at the perfect time for Lyria. I think he can defend from that, but can he defend from the, the navy that Tato has? Tato has more military numbers. Also, he is making that transition. He's using the water triangle. This is the one player that can do that effectively. He has the galleons behind, fast fires in front. Demo is also running in to get some big shots, and there's one. We'll see another one. There's two more here as well. All these gold villagers could be killed as well. Those demos are so good there, but again, look at that, all the HP the going down. Difference. Such a great fight. At the same time, we have a landing here on the map of Teto. Liri is trying to raid, but instant reaction by Teto. Let's take another look. The water fight is just looking so good for Teto. Look at those army numbers. Teto just in full control and killing all those villagers on the small island as well. Uh, yeah, and a few demos coming out now for Liri to try and get some big shots, because these fires are clumped. But with Galleon behind, I think Teto has a huge edge here. Both players having to defend from small raids, but I, I don't think it's done too much damage to the economy. Tato actually built barracks on Leary's base, which will make it more annoying. But this has swung heavily yeah. into Tato's Now favorite. it's basically impossible. Galleon's out basically surrounding your island pretty soon. And yeah, it seems like the only option for Leary really is go on to a lot of Tato Kondo and trying to get the comeback. Oh! Beautifully out of position. Out of That's the fight. one area he cannot see pretty much. So that could work out for Leary. He can fit a couple barracks there before Tato scouts it. And Tato also has barracks on Leary's base before sending in the condos. And he's not having too much success. He has had success with the Navy though. This means he can transport, build a castle, get these golds in the middle, which will be oh so important. Uh, take out these docks, of course. Uh, Leary's gonna have to do something miraculous with this sneak, I think. Yeah, in full control, Tato here. Liri needs to not send to uh, the condos there too early. At the same time, look at the left-hand side of the island of Tato. We can see a transporter being prepared there with three traps to maybe snipe down those defensive castles. Yeah, and this is the beauty of having water control. If you control the water's edge, yeah, you're going to deny this castle from Liri. Then you can send your own traps in. They can be. They will be untouched. You can start killing the economy, killing castles. Cleary was desperate. He knew he needed to get this castle up. Oh, he even needs to delete that castle. Cleary still matches the only trump in his hand. At the same time, the trap's now coming over. But what can Cleary really do? Trying to get a castle up there again. That's so questionable for me. For me. Yeah, he's obviously desperate at this point. Game's not looking very good for him. He did send fast fires through. So this could be a favorable engagement for him. Also, he has condos. He does see the trebuchets. If Tato wastes some of his navy and happens to waste the trep, that'd be a pretty big loss for him. Yeah. I think water control is something Leary needs back, though, so he can get those golds and you know stop losing. The wow. water control and the, the map control in turn. Yeah, and Tato just so focused on the land attack now that he kind of overextended there with his galleons again. Only now going for ship right to decrease the cost there for his galleon. And now the back attack, and we are still looking at pop 170 basically for both players. Liri is still absolutely in this, and Tato didn't notice yet. At the same time, he's defending at the left hand side. So fights all over this map. I believe we are fighting at four different places at the moment. This is an incredible game. I think Larry does have a chance if he can get a big raid in. This is where most of the wood is for Tato. He needs that for Navy. He needs that for everything. It's actually the most important resource. He's lost one trip. I don't know if Leary will be able to have the production because Leary lost his castle. But there is an opportunity for Leary here because the raid is, has been what's forced the panic castle out of Tato. Tato's lost a lot to this raid. Yeah, absolutely. The raid is just so beautiful. He has a damn event of castle. He wanted to build it somewhere else. The water control still pretty nicely here on the comeback for Leary. The big problem, take a look at the wood line here for Leary. We have everything on the left hand side. He only has a small amount of wood here still at the south trying to like cut it heavily but that's the main area and now the condo count on the main island of Leary just pretty brutal in favor for Tato as well. Yeah Leary he went for it but he sent most of what he had to Tato's base and that has been addressed to now. Uh, it looks like this one villager will be transported away. The attention to detail is insane in this game. Um, Tato faltered a little bit but he still has a large navy, still has that military lead, also still has the barracks on Leary's Island that he could use and um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was a chance for Leary there. Still is a chance, but it wasn't as good as it looked like it could have been. The big thing is now, Leary really needs to get hold of his own island. I believe he cannot really get any more raids done because Seto has three defensive castles on his island. Those barracks should absolutely not be used. Leary needs to clear up his own island and stay on board at the same time. But look at that. He is not in control of the main goal on the small island. Yeah, the, the main goal is so important. The first time these players engaged, they both had large navies. So it was a 50-50 battle. Ended up being that 60-40 we talked about. Tato came out on top. And, and now you don't have many resources. So this is probably going to be a firmer hold for Tato in the middle. Displacing this castle here also has the advantage. Tato could just starve Leary and make sure he doesn't receive any damage at home, which he's doing. Have, has the navy, camp next to the trebs, camp the gold, and Leary will not be able to do anything in this game. Yeah, and time is ticking so nicely here for Tato having that relic, something we didn't mention yet, but it is pretty even there. Three to two in favor of Leary. The really big thing is, Tano can just mess up. I'm a bit surprised that he didn't land villagers there and trying to get some barracks up again. Maybe still relying on the ones on the left hand side. But Leary is really struggling for gold now. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Leary to combat this navy. He has 26 army, 61 for Tato. So on land, they might be kind of even with the condos, but Leary's just defending. And then you look at the navy, and it's overwhelming from Tato. Leary is going to try to take this castle out. That's the one thing he needs. He needs that gold. There's two trebs here. I, normally, players don't want to engage on the castles, but we might see it here. Also, look at all the fire ships oh, that were in those so docks. Oh, trebs there. I'm not content sure. I believe that might be a very unfortunate engagement here for Leary. Losing all his fast fires, therefore losing the control of this push area and not having any more gold means he has to tap out here from the greatest game of the tournament so far. Oh, definitely. A exceptional play for both players. You didn't know there were many opportunities for both players throughout that game. I thought Leary had an opportunity many times. The traps in the Feudal Asian Castle Age were amazing. Absolutely. He did three, four, five times. But Tato, who we thought was behind and probably was behind for the first half of this game, was able to get to Imp and hold the water control. Oh, and Leary getting a handshake from his brother, getting the full support here. And <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I absolutely love when people take different approaches about a game and it still gets super even. We, like, three, four minutes ago, we couldn't cast, like, really tell who the winner was. The moment Tato didn't have the gold control at the middle, I believe Leary was in a pretty good spot. Maybe switching into Galleons a bit too late there. Maybe overextending a bit there when it comes to the condo ratings. But Tato, beautiful control. And he had a pretty nice comeback because in mid castle age, it was all Leary. Yeah. It, it's one of those games where we can't point out one thing and say that was what changed it. There's just a bunch of small things. We never know. It's a toss up. Yeah. So wow. That's pretty rare for me. But yeah, <laughs> it, it is like Tato just slowly crawled himself back then. And yeah, I really want to ask him later, like, what did really change the game in his favor? Like, village account was always even. Map control wasn't too important because they were only on fire galleys anyways. And yeah, he stayed on three dogs. His Imperial Age transition was a bit earlier, so that was good for him. Oof, what, a, what a great game for sure. Well, let's look at the statistics here. Units killed for Tato. He was ahead. Still very, very close. The largest army is pretty telling. Tato was able to get Ooh. to that crucial number. I didn't actually realize Leary only had near 40 units. I thought he would have hit a lot more. It was like maybe when he took those engagements on land, he lost on water, and he didn't have the consistent numbers in both areas. Yeah, probably, and he was like... All game long, he was like splitting around the, the war galleys or uh, the fire galleys or fire ships, as you should. And Teto was able to once get that crucial clumped up number, Demos in the front, fire ship after that to buffer, and galleons in the back, getting chemistry, getting all the upgrades, and then he kind of had the unstoppable death ball there on the water. Well, the economy was pretty close. That was Tato's home map. And now Leary gets to choose his map. Leary did exceptional on that game, or in that game. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm super pleased with how they played. Look oh, at that. Great. The timeline, like, where, where would we ever 
point uh, situation yeah. where someone was really ahead. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have the, the castle age time over here, and th that's where Leary had some more army, but village account was pretty even. And then Chateau would just, like, after Imperial Age, he just took a bit more control. We had some big demo hits going down here. And yeah, just beautiful comeback, map awareness, going for condos. And lucky that he saw the first landing there as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we are going to go into the next game shortly, folks. Hope you guys are enjoying your day. Thank you for hey. being here. <laughs> uh, we actually went up to 140 volts there in this game. I didn't even notice that. 140, that's <laughs> maybe a bit too much even for uh, an island yeah. game. But it wasn't the typical island game. We saw way less water and more land units there for sure. And now we will go into the home map of Liri with the 1-1, and it will be Kilimanjaro. So very land-based map, the yeah, parade discipline of, Le of Liri here. What are the tips we are expecting, T90? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it is. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, aggressive, uh, Kilimanjaro is quite open. Uh, you can be aggressive on that map. Um, it depends Leary's style. I feel like Leary's style is more suited towards scout play than yeah. Man at Arms Towers. So uh, maybe Tato would be more interested in going for a civilization that would... I mean, there's so many now in HD, yeah. but a civilization that would suit um, that. So. I think, like, one thing after we start the game, you need to turn off your friends so we don't see that at the top right-hand side. This is a German keyboard, so I've been trying uh, to figure okay, out... Okay, then I will do that for you. Thank you. Um, civilizations. I would say Ethiopians are a good choice. Maybe Malians. Like Daud would pick Malians. I think like Daud would uh, Viper would play Ethiopians. Ah, maybe something crazy like Indians even. We've seen a lot of Indians. It's always a good bet. Yeah. So let's run the game and okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we, we just got some feedback here. <laughs> feedback number one. We can add, always improve. Add fish in the overlay. Not important for that game. We will do it for the not next water game. We will do it. Note number two, kill the alerts. That's something we will do. We will tap out. And that's something I will do pretty soon. And note number three, keep kicking ass, boys. Oh, wow. I like that. I, I can do that. Okay, then, yeah, potential choices here. They are doing the TIFF draft now. And so Kilimanjaro, what is the big difference there compared to Arabia, for example? Uh, can we start the game and then we address it? Okay, fine, <laughs> fine for me Yeah, as I was well. going to say, I mean, I want to talk more about the players because Tato had a horrible first game by his standards, I think, with this build. Yeah, agreed. And a great way to bounce back. leary has been consistent in both games. Yeah, so true. Like, it was super high-level play on game number two there, and not on his team. I think there are roughly like four or five players in the world who really could have shown us that kind of consistent game, different engagement, great macro. Like as you, as you saw, sometimes we had engagement at four different spots and they kept their three TCs running, going into Imperial Age, not forgetting any upgrades. And yeah, it was just super impressive. Now Kilimanjaro might get even more intense and crazy. So Nilly, how old are you? How long have you been playing this game? Real quick, I'll, I'll go somewhere with this. I 99. Promise. 99. He's been playing for two years. He's 17. Feels bad, man. <laughs> thanks, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I've been playing for two years as well, and I'm just... I, I, I was losing online games before he was born. Yeah. I didn't mean to take you down that far, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks for reminding me. But yeah, <laughs> it was like the uh, same thing yesterday at the Mixer Mixer stream when we needed to introduce ourselves, and I was like, yeah, I'm playing this game for 18 years now, casting for 12, and playing like top 100 level for the last 15, and you were like, yeah, I, I saw it on Steam three years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you, you said, uh, well, let me handle that question. Let me <laughs> handle that question. I've been here a lot longer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm excited for this. Oh, well, let's I, look, I think at, they're look doing the Look at Tetzo. That's the face of a thinker, like, ah, what civilization will I go for? And Liri just... Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw his eyes go up like he was thinking. Yeah. And Liri looks like he would play Minesweeper meanwhile. <laughs> like, some solitaire, moving some cards. Well, he, well, he's way too calm. Yeah, that's he's so way surprising. too calm. I don't... 
I don't know. I gotta have some of what he's having. Yeah. I know I would be shitting my pants. And yeah, I know that's an offic official <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> channel here, but that's the truth. If I was 15 and would be sitting here and oh, playing, yeah. damn. So, what? okay, I want to I wanna pat my, can you pat me on the back, please? Incas, very good man in arms towers. Mongols, very good scout play. Not bad for someone that's only what? been doing this for two to three years. I I'm surprised by those civilization picks. Well, that's what we have. There are not any bands, so... Uh-huh. You ready? I'm more than ready. All right, 290. Let's do it. Deciding game. Loser drops down to play MBL. Winner goes in the winner break finals. Here, Gamescom in Cologne. Um, I wouldn't mind some cheering of the crowd for this elimination game here. I wouldn't mind it either. We haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> All right. All right, Kilimanjaro, very open map. Tato's in the blue, playing as the Incas. Had an exceptional game last time. And so did Leary. He did not come out on top. Leary is in the red, playing as the Mongols. Now, I said it before. I said Leary's probably more of a scout to archers type player as far as his, as far as his build goes. Uh, and then Tato, probably more aggressive with man at arms, towers. So I think we should talk a little bit about the maps and you know, certain civilizations, certain strategies need certain maps, Nilly. So uh, if you want to start with Tato, we can talk about the maps and what will be good for him and what will be bad for him with his strategy. Uh, so Tato, he's more of a guy who's trying to make it scrappy here. He yes. played in the also tournament against Liria, and they went both into crossbows, and Tato really out would him there. And that was a very rare game, and a lot of people were criticizing Liria for the approach in that one, and I don't think he will do the same mistake again. And as we see, Mongols not really designed to go for that. We see defensive, like, three-tile gold spots, but the wood is pretty far away, and if you want to point out some walling spots, it will be super tough for you. It looks like even more open than in the first game, Gold Rush. Yeah, I think if he is going to be going for Man at Arms, and we'll know at some point, I think that they need to get there fast. Sometimes you can have the Man at Arms back at your base when you're getting the upgrade, and you need to get that build right. If he's able to attack Leary early enough, if Leary is going scouts, uh, of course he could go Man at Arms with Mongols, then he can keep the scouts away from him, or keep what Leary's doing away from him. So we'll talk a little bit more about the strategies they're actually doing and not my assumptions, but uh, definitely open maps. A wood line for Leary is going to be the left of his town center. Gold very close to TC's for both players, so they should have early access to gold if they want. Tatsu's going to call a re here. Yeah. We, we said map not looking too great for him. Wood pretty far away. Open gold spot, open berries. The ostrich is far away. I think it's a good call. I, I kind of like it when players call, re, call Rees because it's, it's exciting. Like You know that they care about this, and they're so... Sorry? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm they're, taking the next Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are so excited to win this game. Th stay in the game, please. Yes. I believe Tato did a mistake here. We, can't, we can call restarts to four minutes, and I think Liri should have waited the four four minutes because... Uh, Tato should have waited the four four minutes yeah. because then he sees, did Liri send three villagers on wood or four? Are we expecting maybe M&A? Are we expecting scouts? Maybe Archer? And that's an information that he is yeah, not getting... Like what what like strategy is he going to do with his civilization, right? Like calling the reset one minute too early. Yeah, it's a, that's a good... That's an important thing. So, uh, I'm going to have a chat with Zach real quick. Nilly, you're going to have to entertain. Daddy Empire is around, giving us some feedback. And we will re-host the game here. And... Yeah. I believe still super interesting civilization here. Incas against Mongols means well, no scouts for a Tato here. Maybe some MD aggressions. Archers are a possibility. And he's guaranteed to have a pretty solid start because he will always start with the Llama under his CC. Maybe one of the problems in the Gold Rush game and guarantees himself to have the transition so much nicer there in the feudal age. At the moment, he's still trying to download some mods, as it seems. Maybe the small wood mod, very important here on Kilimanjaro, because we have huge trees here who have more wood than on normal Arabia maps. And we are in the game, ready to play Mongols. 
And now Tato out of his restart. On the other side, we have Leary still with the option to restart if he thinks his map isn't that great. And yeah, players seem to be getting back into the game. Tato still super focused. Leary, I've, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a more relaxed guy ever than him. He's like just sitting there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm killing nerds in the internet. Now I'm killing nerds offline in Cologne. No real difference. I think he should be feeling pretty confident how well he played the Gold Rush game. Just stretching that nag a bit more. And yeah, he, he performed pretty well on islands as well. It seems like he really prepared. Didn't put that many thoughts into it as at all, I would say. And. Yeah, but still, super nice control, and his macro was absolutely on point, we have to say that. And now his own home map, he has to be prepared on that. Not really sure how much he trained, I talked to all the other players, how much they trained, what their, their thoughts are, and you have to go offline? Yeah, offline. Yeah, so now we have the streaming PC set up as well, everyone in the game. Yes. And yeah, colors are set up, players are set up, T90 is ready as well. And you can see us at the beautiful stage here. Yeah, the King Kinguin stage, as you can see in the top. And I think T90, before that game, you might want to throw out one of those Kinguins. Oh no, don't we have something to throw away? I believe maybe after the series, before we will set something up. And look at that, we have a lot of drip pepper at the floor there as well. This is so awesome. People have been sticking around for a couple hours now, I think, right? Yeah. Someone being on the smartphone there instead of listening to what I have to say. Thanks to that. <laughs> Hi. She takes you to the grill. Okay, then I would say next try. And yes. let's go for the all deciding game in this series. That, that was a very good point. Tato should have used that yes. extra 55 seconds to, to see what Leary is going to do. I believe it's going to be Scouts, though, because he went three to Woods. So. Okay. All right, folks. Here we are, game at three between Leary and Tato. This is the deciding game in this best of three. Leary is in the red. He's playing as the Mongols. In the blue, we have Tato playing as the Incas. Tato used his rehost last time, and his base is still kind of rough. That comes with the territory with Kilimanjaro. But. I, I like it way more. Just go a bit south of his CC. So much clumped up Urizos there. Gold, stone, the berries, the wood. You can get like four, four like distribution camps there. So, so clumped up. And I believe if he goes something like super aggressive at the front and towers up at home, he cannot, he cannot be touched there. That's actually a very good point. Resources are so close together, he, can, he only really needs to defend in one spot, maybe two spots. The one thing I don't like for him is the lack of wood. You see the wood above his TC. Uh, back here, there's you know, a lot of ponds here. A small wood line next to his berries. Wood line itself would be nice, but unfortunately, the berries are there for the early game. Also, we'll, of course, have the wood forward, but that's the one thing I don't like. Let's look at Leary's base. Uh, Leary also has resources quite close. Interesting, he has these ponds in front. Could use them to wall off a little bit, though this map is not easily walled. Yeah. On the back, again, equally bad for wood. Typical Kilimanjaro stuff, and this is going to be a scrappy game. What is that villager doing there? Is she already walling that area? That would be so surprising to me. Oh no, he's going for that very aggressive wood. That's super... Su or oh, is that a misclick? It has to be a misclick. Or oh, he's walling resources. Oh, what is going on here? He's super early with the scouting. Maybe he's... Oh, that would be so sneaky, Liri. Going for the ostriches, maybe. And, <laughs> and walling his villagers to kill the elephant. Because most of the maps we have two boars. In this map we only have one elephant. So like denying one of them is just so much more crucial than on any other map. And look at her, he's going over. That's no accident. That's a ballsy move. For That's a ballsy that is a, move. That is ballsy. Oh well hold on a second. He's gonna try and lame uh oh I, I don't think I've ever seen an elephant lamed. I'm sure it's happened before, but yeah. it, it just looks awkward. <laughs> but here he <laughs> the sound, goes. The sound and is so funny as well. And now the eagle is chasing there, so the villager at the right-hand side can come in. And now Teto desperately needs those zebras, but he won't get them. This is insane. He can kill five zebras and steal the boar. Damn, has Teto any chance to block that? If he is able to, then he isn't having the worst start. 
because Leary will have very little scouting info. Let's take a look. He's going to go for the block here. He's going to try and run in and, and block, the, block the pathfinding of the elephant, but Leary will be paying attention. There's a pause. Oh, and Leary, he's scratching his head. <laughs> Does he want to restart here? And oh, man. Oh, look at him. Look at him. It's Here's a 355, so he has five seconds to make this decision. I've never seen anything like this. I feel like we should Neither do I. And he's just sitting back and he's saying 14. So we will continue yes. this game. I believe Leary is in a pretty good <laughs> spot here. He felt like mm, not 100% sure if I can get that elephant back to home. Now sending another villager from STC to welcome the elephant. At the same time, we can see the naming. I believe Leary has a perfect position here. Oh my god. I've never seen this. We've casted thousands of games. I've never seen this before. It's going to work. He's going to steal the elephant and he's also going to kill these zebras. Oh. <laughs> Tato is he's screwed. He's going to need an incredible response to this. I can't believe what I just saw. Oh, beautiful move, guys. Give a hand for Leary oh, here. Man. Incredible stuff. He is one villager behind, but that's only because he went for the early loom. If you could maybe come up with like things to hype and give to Total Hope, those zebras are pretty close to his mill. Yeah, I, I mean... It's, it almost is because Tato called a re, I think. Leary can try something ballsy like this because Tato cannot call another re. That's so if Leary, if Leary failed, he could have called a re. And he thought about it as well. Thank God he didn't. That would have that yeah. been awful. But I, 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 he's in a great position now. It was surprising to me. And I, I loved how he was sitting there like, mm, <laughs> yeah. thinking about it. Damn, uh, is it the really the best thing that I wanted to have? But he could not have done it in the second game. And I think it went perfectly for him. And now even laying the stone. So he's, he's going to lame the stone as well. So I, I think Tato's aware of this. There's really nothing that Tato can do yeah, and except it, send the eagle over. Honestly, it's not that important. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, this guy, this guy, dude. Okay, but now the eagle around to punish it. Let's take a look. And now Tato is quick walling against the scout. He oh, the scout might not. So only 6 HP, the villager, most likely of livery, will die though. And the scout could die as well. Tato could oh. go for the scout here. Wow, I, I feel like Leary had such a good start here. It was so unique, but probably should have sent that villager back home. I, I think he might be caught up in the moment to try and do something like that. I don't love blaming the stone is that yeah. important. Maybe a bit of an overaggression there in DT90. We have Leary now clicking up any second. Let's take a look at the resource of Tato on the other side. Uh. Only at 200, and look at that. He has an endless amount of villagers on those zebras, but... Uh, I, I mean, I know he has all of his resources close, but if he can't click up the Feudal Age because of that masterclass move from Leary, it, it is going to be rough. 150 food, two villagers queued up. Uh, maybe he'll go for a Drush and just trying to lay, but this is a late Drush and adding farms. Tato, any build order that he had, gone. It's all adjusting at this point, looking at the amount of resources. In fact, if the viewers here look at the players, they're constantly like glancing up to that top corner to see how many resources they have. That's just going to have to make an adjustment. Uh, Leary is halfway to the feudal age. Yeah. MA or militia coming out for Tetono. Maybe trying to force those villagers at the front here off of their zebras. And Tetono actually would have a perfect map to build like eight farms pretty close to two defensive towers and go for like unique units on that very clump map. But Incas with the Kamayuk, not really the greatest unit to go for. Yeah, Tato needs to harass with the militia, make Leary have to address these militia because Leary is going to try and defend with villagers and go out with a feudal attack towards Tato's face. Leary has three on gold. He did have four on gold. Probably archers here, right? Probably because the archers. he's not going to be making any militia. And if he does, it's going to be very late. So he will have to defend with villagers till he gets the archer range up. And here is the drush from Tato. This is where he needs a response. He needs to keep Leary away from him so he can click up to the feudal age. And look how so he's uh, sneaking away those two villagers at the left hand side so that he get not interrupted. Let's take a look as he's getting the quick one. No, Mike the villager out. Pretty nice reaction there. Not really losing much. I want to see some quick walls though. I, I feel like he's hoping the TC will help him here. Maybe debating him in indeed. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, so it's still two on gold. He wants a gold rather early. He will have the archery mm -hmm. range up to 80%. He has 141 gold at the moment and more villagers going to that gold. So I think he's in a good position to create some archers. This is where he needs a quick wall. Oh, not really on time, Elyria. That's a bit surprising. Maybe not having his, uh, uh, his hotkeys perfectly set up. At the same time, we have now Teto adding a lot of farms, but only looking at 200 food at the moment. And uh oh, oh, that was a 
Bit of a misplay from Leary. And this is what Tato needs. He still hasn't clicked up to the Feudal Age. He needs to delay, delay, delay. And Leary is dealing with this Drush. Probably not as easily as he would have liked, but he does have one Archer. It'll take time to mass those Archers, but it'll also take time for Tato Those to get to the Feudal Age. Way more damage than they should have. It's keeping Tato in this game. Yeah, and he's ahead by six villagers or six and a half now. And the Feudal up, uh, upgrade is like five villagers. So Tato even a bit ahead in that regard, now taking some damage on those Archers. So it's not looking too savvy for Tato. Well, I'm on Tato's point of view for everyone watching right now. So we can see when he finally clicks up. If Tato delays enough, you said he has the stone here. He could go defensive towers. He will have more villagers. He could try and fast castle behind some towers and stay in this game. Well, he's still two and a half minutes away from actually reaching the feudal age. And I wouldn't be surprised if Re Liri realizes, like, this guy um, should have a pretty bad setup. Maybe send some villagers to the front and build some aggressive towers, which would be... Do you think... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. Do you think it was a mistake for Tato to run to the right-hand side like this? He was doing a lot of damage on the left-hand side there, but now it would have been clumped up. The archers were there. He, you want to force the archers to be even more defensively, and the wood is more defensively, so I think it's okay-ish. My thought process was, of course he's going to hit the wood line now, but this is what Leary wants. Leary wants these militia back here. He wanted to be able to send his archers forward. Maybe if Tato was able to delay a little bit more, I would have been more satisfied with it. Awful position for him, of course. I think he's done quite well considering the circumstances. But at this level, it's just an awful, awful start for him. Why did Leary delete those walls there? Might, might even lose the villager going down to 4 HP, trying to take her down with the militia, trying to... Oh. Yeah, oh. probably get... Oh, 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 oh. She's oh, dead. <laughs> uh, but what he really is focusing on is the front, and as will Tato. Tato has no defense. He will not have enough resources to go for many towers. He's losing this woodline axis on the right. Four archers coming in. He did have an outpost there to spot it. I, I see a dead body there. I, that might have been a villager, actually. Um, I don't know. Not, don't need to focus on that right now. Tato is completely surrounded after that move from Leary earlier on. Tato is now trying to quick wall as well. Villagers will go down here. Oh, Tato just hits the feudal age at 14 minutes. Oh god, and Leary is now pushing in. Still no defensive tower. Now trying to rush one up. We have MA upgrade for Tato at the same time. Luckily, Leary is losing some archers close to the town center. Tato is trying to focus down the arch on the left hand side by turning this villager back beautifully and is getting some damage done here. That's Leary. Yeah, uh, Leary, he's in full control now. But Tato does have a tower up. And back to what you said, this tower does protect the gold and the wood. The wood is very messy. He only has well, five trees on that line. And Leary is going to throw some of his archers away here with a bit of a misclick, sending them into the tower. Tato actually taking the score lead there for a moment. Yeah, not Tato, that, that two villages ahead, still yeah. is MDA alive. Yeah, he will get kind of outcountered by the unit, but oh, even going for the defense upgrade here is Whoa. Tato. That's so surprising to me. Yeah, it is surprising considering the HP on his man at arms currently. Well, um, it's giving the villagers an upgrade as well. Uh, yeah, that uh, makes more yeah, sense. Yeah. So the villagers will get raided so much tougher now. Um, I want to see another tower actually out of Tato. He they collected a, a little bit of stone. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's another tower. So that's yeah. pretty good for him. Now getting the archer range up. And if he goes for some skirmishers, I think he should be pretty fine. And he's still in this game. And as we said before, still... Oh, a nice debation there. And he is still two villagers ahead. I like that move from Tato. I don't know if the viewers noticed it, but he sent the eagle perpendicular. So the, uh, the archer missed. Oh, I'm sorry. That would have been parallel, but... The same time. There's the archer range for Tato now, and he's going to need some skirmishers. He doesn't have a lot of food for it. Uh, he is going to place two archer ranges. He's done a pretty good job considering the circumstances. Leary hasn't done that much damage at Tato's base. Absolutely incredible, but Leary is now going for fletching, and that really gives him so much more opportunities. One more range, one more attack for those archers, and they're sneaking around, but Tato with his base build up and the outpost in full knowledge of that. I, I love how we can look over at the players and see how focused they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's almost unfair to them, you know. <laughs> we get to look at them and, and talk about how they look. But uh, defensive towers for Tato should be fine for him. Uh, he needs some massive military. Maybe consider doing what he did earlier. 
sending the army forward. Okay, now another mining camp for Chateau trying to get for, to go for some more stone. And I believe Chateau will go for more army. He might even go for archers himself because like Zeri's map isn't really designed to be like super nice um, when it comes to defense. And now Liri going for the tech switch with some scouts. I like that scout move. This kid has been on top of it. He's expecting skirmishers. He's actually seen a few of them. He has the archer advantage. This is almost similar to last, well, sorry, the first game where Leary had uh, his knights and his skirms. He's, he's adding in new units constantly. A lot of players will be more comfortable trying to get to Castle Age here, but he's trying to hold the front. And one or two scouts will push these skirmishers away. Tato won't be able to do much on the front. I will say, Tato's been a menace with those remaining men at arms, but they are all dead now. A decent build lead for Leary. However, Tato does have the skirms to counter. He does have fletching. He's getting padded archer armor. Uh, I didn't expect Tato to still be in this game. I'm super surprised as well. As we said, he is still in the defensive, but it's looking way better than we would have thought. I, I felt like, wow, Leary had such a great start and still he is putting himself in such a great position. His ego is rolling. He get, has a lot of archers being so active. Tato is just desperately holding because he has some skirmishers out. But once Leary's scouts are coming over, which are the perfect counter against those skirmishers, it's yeah. totally very tough. I think Tato, in Tato's situation, he needs to hope that those scouts are a waste for Leary in some way, shape or form. Interesting. We see Tato now going for the Spearman. Did he scout the stable? Not really. That's so interesting. Going for the blind counter there, seeing that the archers cannot really hit him and the only real good unit against the skirmishers would be the scouts. And therefore already preparing the counter and even queuing up more Spearmen. And the perfect time because now the scouts are coming in. Yeah, there are the scouts. There is one spear, a few archers. But, you know, Leary now is worth it to go with these scouts. If he didn't find any skirmishers, if Tata had enough time to mass archers, the scouts might not have been worth it. But I think here it is worth it. Hold some map control. Just made three scouts. Can use that stable later on as well. And of course, I think that Leary will have an edge in the uptime. The score's a little bit deceiving for me. I, I do think Leary's a little bit more ahead than that. We have to compare you know, farms and the health of the economy. Another advantage for him is that he's controlling the middle area, the green area of this map, and that's the hilly one. So when he keeps his army there and Tito always in his base, he will never be able to take a super cost efficient fight. Yeah, it's very good for Tato that he has these towers. And two towers are protecting almost his entire economy now. A couple farmers having to jump into the town center and get back to work. But uh, we've seen this before. Uh, Tato was in defensive mode, and we said, okay, Tata will have an opportunity. Leary needs to stop him from doing anything, and Leary did that at the time. Will he be able to hold on here in game three? No one wants to go down to the loser's bracket. No one does, and we are only having a best of one there. So, so, so evil position you absolutely don't want to put yourself into. We have now for Tato. He has a nice amount of army. It's pretty even, actually, when you look at the army count. Yeah, I... I've Tato needs to fight. He needs to fight at some point. He's at 200 food. Food is healthy. Uh, Leary, I mean, they're getting wheelbarrow around the same time. A little bit heavier on gold than maybe he would like. I love the defensive towers at home for Leary. That's a wise move on this map. Absolutely. He, it's so possible that since Tato cannot really engage the whole army, that he's trying to defend with skirmishers and spearmen and just tries to sneak like eight archers around and that would be so deadly for Leary. But he knows about that threat and yeah just defense perfectly well in leary's position if he hits the castle age first he gets a crossbow upgrade plus bodkin and makes a couple knights and he can deal with that entire army almost with just the knights because it's mainly skirmishers so the uptime is huge here and leary is going to try and help himself out by sending in his ball of archers to the right he sent the other army to the left he's killed one villager he's killed two and Tato forced to build another watchtower. These villagers are no longer working. Sure, some archers are going down, but in my opinion, that's worth it for Leary. Uh, Tato does, he has caught up a little bit with the vill count. Well, he has, like, vill count is that even, and he is now ahead when it comes to the military count. So the only important thing is now who gets Castle Edge early, and the big thing is Tato will not be able to go for that night tech that Leary's option is, and that he was in. Yeah, really the winning on the Gold Rush game for him. Yeah, and if there's any player that would use... Oh, Tato actually has a small counter here. He's killed a villager. Uh, if there's any player 
that would go for those Castle Age Eagles, as Incas, I think it would be Tasso. And oh, I think he needs probably. to have, he can't just have skirmishers and archers. I think he needs to make something else in there. Yeah, I think we might see a lot of crossbows off him, maybe some mangonels, maybe some monks if Liri is going heavily on uh, those knights. And now I'm not 100% sure if Liri is really doing the best thing here. Is uh, he trying to fight us off? I guess he's going to send his own archers in, but this is Tato of all people. Tato will micro down your villagers. Both players are advancing to the Castle Age as we speak. A little bit wasteful and honestly a similar raid, similar raid as far as effectiveness goes for Tato with just four archers. O'Leary went in with 15, 20. And suddenly he's 10 pop ahead, but the line's on the way here for O'Leary, so he will go into the tax switch. And yeah, we saw that before. Some skirmishes, some knights, some mangonels. It, it is tough if you're staying on a lot of like weak mass of units. Yeah, and I don't know if you recall, but there, there were scouts on the left. Leary wasted them, or he took a fight that probably wasn't the best. And this gives Tato an opportunity to run out now, so he can get a little bit of map control before his upgrades. Now, Tato, the downside is he he isn't creating any eagles. He's gone three ranges instead, so he might stay full ranged unit. With the Maganel from Leary, I could clean up most of that. Uh, this game is so close. If Tato ends up winning this, it'll be incredible. But if Leary ends up winning it, it'll be incredible because of the <laughs> way he did it. I, yeah, I don't know how we're now watching actually, this. Now, actually, are passing each other. That's a bit surprising, but yeah, absolutely right point. Yeah. Yeah, Tato's comeback would be incredible, and the dominance of Leary as well. So it's a real treat. I thought after that great game, number two, it could not really get better. But this game is still so intense. Mass amount of armies now passing each other. Let's see where they can get the damage done. That's a siege workshop. Okay, so in the Gold Rush game, Tato sent his army forward. He got trapped, he lost his army, and Leary then had much better position and won that game. There's a Siege Workshop already on the way for Leary. Both armies are running forward. Who will have the better fight? Who will have the better defense? I think Leary so far, he's killed one archer, and there is a villager there he could snipe. It's going to be more threatening, I think. Oh, yeah. But it depends on if this army is, is seen. Yeah, that's true. And now he will see it, so he will build a mango. On the other side, we have Tato going for the university and ballistics tech instead of going for the, the mango himself, which might be a better unit to fight off all those crossbowmen knocking at his door. Liri now with the plus one defense and bloodlines, building his knight to mount up. But yeah, a lot of idle villagers here, but the mango is coming over. Yeah, Magano will be on the way. Uh, these knights can't engage yet. It's so costly to get crossbow, to get bod canero, and create knights with upgrades. So in the early castle age, these crossbows and scrums would be quite strong. Now here's Larry with his Magano. This is what he can see. He is in range, but Tato's running away. That's going to be a decent shot. And there are some weak units in there. You didn't see a lot of units die, but they are bleeding. And also this could be another trap, a famous Leary trap. If he's able to send his crossbows to the right, Oh, look at that. Spearman being split off there, trying to yeah. snipe down those Magnots. The rest of the army going to the right hand side. That means those knights will be so much better as well. In the middle, we can indeed see some knights doing wonders there against the skirmishers. At the same time, now Tato closing distance against all those villagers at the woodline, though. Yeah, well, that's going to be three villagers for Tato. Uh, Tato has a healthier population. Uh, he's, he's dealt with the threat of the Magnell. He hasn't received that big of a shot. His weak units are still alive and shooting. And Leary's desperate. Uh, running some more wood on the front here. Uh, that tower is really not going to protect him that much anymore. He's lost one villager. There's a lot of skirms here, so they can take the arrow fire. And we talked about ballistics and how important that would be. Absolutely, and sniping that villager there. I believe now it would be a huge mistake of Tato to overextend. I believe he needs to go home. He needs to group up his army. He needs to get the monks out, get some defensive TCs up, and then like take another engagement because this would have been incredibly bad for him. Yeah, I like to remind you guys, Tato hit the Feudal Age after 14 minutes, and he is leading in this game in population, leading in builds, leading in army. So every single category, he's doing a better job. Oh, but man. there are a decent amount of knights for Leary, and Tato still is heavy on Skirm. Um, yeah, that's true. He is, I would say, still missing plus two defense, but exactly that is what he is trying to go for now. Lots of defensive towers here by Tato. Not a single extra to see, though. Let's take a look. Oh, Magnolts. I'm getting scared. 
Yeah, the, the Maganel will address this run to the right. Now, again, a lot of skirmishers. There are some crossbows in there. But plus two knights and bloodlines is not going to be very easy. And the Maganel will have a hill advantage. There will be two Maganels, and there are the crossbows now from Leary. I felt like he was a little bit passive. I wanted to say this. In the Islands game, he had an opportunity where he had more military. You actually said Tato was pushing with less. I feel like Leary should have been more aggressive in that moment. Uh, in this moment, he needs to be aggressive. And, oh, there's there's that monk. Yeah. That monk could change things. Only one monk, not really enough. You cannot really fight those mangles yet. Yeah. He's not building any eagles, and even if so, there is so much army still that's super efficient against eagles that you see on the left-hand side is now super crucial. Yeah, that's a, a clutch timing there for Tessa to get that TC up. I feel like with two monks, you convert some knights, you can kill a Maganel. So that's what Tato's going to be doing here. He's going to go for a conversion, and then he's going to try and kill the Maganel with the knight because he cannot create knights. Oh, actually, he might do the Maganel against the tower here. Lots of arrows flying out there, but not doing too, too much damage. That's a bit surprising to me. And the tower might actually go down, not focusing on those Maganels early enough. Tato still with a huge army and a head and villagers, but it will be tough to take a good engagement for him. Yeah, the, the problem for Tato is... He might have more army, but there's two Maganels. That could wipe out half of his army in one shot. So every moment is so crucial here, especially when the map's so open. Just look at the wood line for Tato. The same is at Leary's base. The monks are running away. They might go for one conversion, but with crossbows there, I don't think a Maganel will go down. If that conversion happens, he did get two conversions, I believe. Yep, indeed. And now finally we see Tato going for the Siege Worker. Oh! That's oh! a big shot, and there could be more shots. And I don't think the Knights will help out against these Maganels much. The tower is there, of course, and oh God, there's oh going to be God. another shot, but Tato is oh, not Magnus split effectively down, enough. And now he can take the fight, I believe. Those villagers obviously super beefy now as well. Those Knights very low HP after getting so many Magnus' shots. He's running into the next tower here at the right-hand side. Villagers need to flee to the right. Mong is chasing down as well. This Magnus is out of position. I believe Tato can chase here. He has more army. And he also got Thumb Ring. We didn't mention that, but he did get Thumb Ring, which helps out in these fights because he has so many Archer units. Uh, Leary, he, he ventured a long way in there. Now, he could have a small victory if he sees these villagers. Oh, Tato, five villagers behind. I think he needs to pull those villagers towards his army. Beautiful to see they're controlling a lot in the middle. It seems like Leary wants to chase those down, but he will lose all his knights if he wanted to go for it. Nice retreat. And we're still in a super even game. Look at that. Villager counts just neck and neck. Army a bit better for our player from Spain. What a game three. What a game three. Tato, he was defensive, but he does still have the population lead not as as large as it was earlier. I want to take a quick look at the economies because this is so important. One TC, two TC for Leary. I don't see, yeah, and more Maganels and units in the middle. And then there's going to be three TCs for Tato. Uh, Tato has a TC out way in the middle. And Leary the other one, of sees course, is that Tato is staying only on Skirmisher and mainly crossbows. And he is adding more and more Magnets. Look at that, four Magnets out. And he is adding more stables as well. So it will be full night Magnet aggression against a guy who will stay on a lot of archers. I think Tato needs to transition. Yeah, but th the question is what, what can he transition to? I, I feel like you could make an argument for his own Siege Workshop. But there are knights there with full defense upgrades from Leary, so that might be a waste. He has done that. Here's his Maganel, but there's also a knight from Leary going to send that Maganel away. Tato needs his TC, and it's not going to be easy because there's hills and forward villagers for Leary as well. We'll see what he has planned, but Tato's going with the Maganel, and he's gotten it. That's that was an incredible trip. shot. But a knight closing down the distance now, even getting converted, so that's pretty good for him. And Leary had a pretty deadly army, but maybe an engagement more from the left-hand side, where the Mangodal is now, would have been better because he could have utilized that hill bonus better. And now, look at that. Finally, <laughs> Tato came up with the counter. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Tato could get his own big shot here. Leary has Whoa. split into the Maganel shot. That Maganel shot uphill and still killed a decent amount of those crossbows and weakened most of them. Uh, still, Leary has a large advantage on the hill, but very good point, Nilly. He needs 
to go to the left side. He needs a little bit more and here. Now they're both rushing to the left hand side. Obviously the army of Liri a bit faster there with the knights. Now scouting that TC will just need to jump in. Not losing a single one, getting some damage. Really good stuff, but the Mang Knights could get huge shots now of the 90. Oh, oh my man, hand, <laughs> my heart is just is beating so much. I'm surprised you can't hear it in the mic because I'm waiting for a big shot. But Tato, he knows they're there. And redemption, let's take a look. Man Monks are getting micro big shot against two one monk. Mangano finally converted. Let's watch what's up with the rest. And that went pretty well for Liri. Yeah, it did go pretty well for Liri. What was that? Five monks? Yeah. Tato's of course microing. Not gonna oh, be enough. Gosh. As not what Tato needed. He can lose his TC and lose all the villagers. And currently Liri has more villagers. And so that would make it even worse. Indeed, so he's already behind. That's most of his wood. And Tato, he needed those comforts. He had six monks there, and they were so clumped up. Now sending the villagers to the left hand side because he knows he cannot save them anyways. Tato needs to fall back, but he's still leading in points. What is uh, going on? I don't know, but for a time, Tato had 15, 20 extra population. Oh, look at the right hand side as well. Look at that big ratings there. So ugly. Only one villager. I, and saw, I saw that knight there earlier, actually. And I thought, you know, if. If crossbows aren't over here, that knight could kill a lot of bills. And I think Leary was trying to camp that gold. And those villagers just went to that gold. So Leary has more knights here now. So he's on multiple sides. He's taken the score lead, taken that population lead. Look at the vill difference, Nilly. Oh, God. Now let's see. That looks like a Dowd castle. Left hand side, so many mangroves coming over. No army to protect that. Those villagers might die. Please, uh, we need to close the eyes of Leary because there will be so much blood. Oh, God. It's halfway up now. I don't think Leary has noticed he's attacking the farm. Tato has recognized what's happening here. He needs to micro his villagers. There could be one big shot in these villas on the left. All of them could go down. Oh, and he needs to pull back. 80% of that castle. Trying to get some shots against those knights. And then knights losing a lot of HP. But that castle, I don't see how it can get up. Uh, the army on the right hand side. Trying to fight off those magnets are going down. Leary is in full control here, T90. He's going to take down the last... No, I'm sorry. There's still two Maganels remaining, but still the damage has been done. Even if Tato gets his castle up, oh God. it's so much better for Leary with his economy back at home. This pressure has been mind-blowing from Leary. He's still controlling that right. He's actually sending a villager over there now, so we can't forget about that. The TC is now down. Tato needs a couple Maganel shots. What? And Look at Leary's army amount. Going for it there. 13. He and maybe that's, that's over yeah. with those mangonels. Those crossbowmen can still do some damage. Look at that. Points are still super even. Those villagers are getting micro mangonel going down. So now it's basically one mangonel against the full 40 army here for Tato. Not 100% sure if that's really the fight he can take, but... Oh. Fire. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. That oh. almost killed me, I swear. Uh, the the might kill the mangonel. Oh. Finishing your own. Why, why? How did the mangonel not die? Packs, obviously. <laughs> oh, I mean, the house was there, so the closest thing was the house. Maybe the castle didn't, oh, didn't fire at it, but I, Leary didn't seem to keep his production up during that. He has extra villagers, but uh, what does he have to show for it now? He does have the stables. He's making light cab. But the thing is, Tetsu, look at the village account. He's over 40 behind. Yeah, he has a nice military count, but he needs to kill endless amount of villagers now. Needs to get his own eco running. It will be so tough. Kamayux now. That's a good addition, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we don't expect that. I didn't expect it either, but certainly a possibility. The Kamayux are great against Light Cavan Knights. The one thing we have to say about Tattoo is he hasn't lost this bulk of his army. He's had this for a while. The Maganels didn't threaten it too much, and now he's going to run across and kill some of Leary's villagers. If Leary can't use his economy for military it's useless yeah. he has to be able to create military and pure light cap might struggle we'll see and Tato has now the hill advantage, getting the map control. Maybe he can ride, raid so much more. The problem is he cannot really split up his units. So Liri can really flood the whole map. And Tato needs to walk in those that one death ball. And even then, he cannot really fight Mangonels. It is a tough spot, and Tato needs to like make something happen. And he's getting raided at the front. Aye, aye, aye. We might see what we call in the competitive community spring style from Leary. Just, just continue to raid full castle age. Uh, Tato, of course, is going to have the Kameyuks there in defense. We'll see if the Lycav can kill villagers. Still below 60 for Tato, so it's not going to get any better for him there. And Tato the same. I think he's going to 
I don't think he can hold out for the Imperial Age. He needs to do a lot of all-in Castle Age aggression. <laughs> I feel bad for these villagers who are constantly having to relocate for wood, but Leary's recognizing this is where the army's coming. These two guys are obviously not Just having involved. a small chat, like, yeah. oh, do we want to die or want to yeah, exactly. live and go back to the gold spot? Yeah. Uh, rock, uh, rock, paper, scissors? The decision okay, was made live. too late. Let's yeah. live. I, I think that that conversation was probably a waste of time for them because <laughs> now Tato sees them. But uh, Leary has been on Tato's gold. Uh, but Knight's coming over and... Oh, just take a look at the minimap. It's all Leary, just spreading around like a virus. Yeah, it is. Uh, that gold's important. Even if he loses these villagers, he's so many extra villagers where it, it's fine. He's taken some of the gold away from Tato, put it into his own bank, and luckily for him at the moment, he is safe back at home. Has gone into his own skirmishers. I, I like that move, seeing as Tato hasn't really had a unit except Maganel's uh, to, to counter that choice. So maybe Maganel's skirmishers like have that could kill this army from Tato, which is pretty much what he's relying on right now. Those players still playing this full castle age. No one close to clicking up. Mass Light Jeff here and Liri finally getting his Magnals over towards the middle. Tato needs to be super aware of not losing his, his army. If he loses his army, oh god, he got he got he got he got he. He might lose his whole game. Another big shot here. T90. He lost some of it. We actually missed it on the screen. He's gonna lose more of it now. The thing is, he cannot address the like Kevin and the skirmishers without running into Maganel. So he just has to run again. Leary also has a few units, uh, maybe not as many as I had hoped for a trap, but it's just not looking good for Tato. I feel like the lack of economy is is hurting him, and Leary is doing a good job of keeping the pressure on, which is one thing I said he needed to do. And he didn't sit back at his base very often this game. Now actually we get onto army competition where eagles would be a beautiful transition. We are fading, f uh, facing mainly Mangonauts, Light, Curve and Skirmish. Oh jeez. Uh, but no you- Oh! oh so it was gotcha. close. It was close. The Skirmishers, and, uh, do you, can you check to see if uh, Leary has Ballistics? Because Ballistics would be a good move. I mean, if you're going Skirm versus Skirm, it, it's even. So I think Leary should continue with the Skirmishers. That's not have Ballistics. Okay. Well, uh, there's chain mail for Tato. So, oh, and he's adding more barracks, so the eagles will come in indeed. Castle Age Eagles, yeah. And I, I actually said earlier, I think if one player is going to use Castle Age Eagle Warriors, it would be Tato. He's used a lot of different things to stay in this game. Uh, unfortunately for him, Leary has full map control now, and he has almost double the amount of villagers, there's more army. Uh, it, it's all down to Tato using the military he has left effectively and trying to turn this around. Uh, and when was the last the time that Tato really did raids? Yeah, he got some villagers over in the middle, then he forced some villagers to be pulled. But the real raiding, some time ago. Yeah, uh, I think I said all in castle from Leary was, was probably what we're going to see. I think at this point, he's obviously creating a lot of castle age units, but his economy is going to be so strong if he can get the gold, he's going to be able to click up. And, and look at this, Tato's actually going to kill the Eagle Warriors. Indeed. And at, But at the same time, unfortunately for him, these skirmishers have done work on his remaining archer units. So I don't think that was the, the best thing for him in the end. I mean, well, he needed to kill those mangonels and yeah. yeah, it's just like, it's so easy to look good if you're so far behind. Yeah, th that's a very good point. Yeah, you can lose two mangonels in this situation if you're Leary. Atacho's retreating to his castle where he has so much, but so little. <laughs> he needs his wood. Uh, he Leary needs the military. Yeah, Leary um, just goes full ham, pop 170 and castle, full production. He still is not banking on, up any resources. Look at that. He has like four archery rangers running, endless amount of stables, and he's pushing in in that very yeah, sensitive area here of the toe. Yeah, and I think he knows the position he's in. He's just desperately trying to get this back. Um, I, Leary has scouted this gold, which would be huge. He can take that gold. I don't know about the extra gold spots. But Leary has these resources too. Leary should have this game at this rate, I think. Absolutely. Just compare the population. Tato is only in it because points are still so even. He got some nice raids in earlier. Yeah. And it is the last game. And if he goes down, he might be one game away from elimination. Aye, aye, aye. And I yeah. can see why he wants to stay in this one. If he thinks he still has 1% of a chance, fight it out. Yeah. And uh, I... If... A, a player comes back in Tato's situation one in a million times, that's enough. Just just play it out. Just play it out until you can't play any longer. It is getting to that point, though, because he well and truly is starved. His villager count hasn't risen at all. 
His population's awful. Normally, once you get below 80, you just know bad things are happening. And Leary's going for a forward castle, which will deny some of this wood. And these villagers are dying to just like having a few knights and skirmishers. A tattoo maybe you're hoping his eagles to do something. They'll see this castle. He probably needs to stop I, I believe that Joe is now trying to go in for the last engagement. If he loses his army, you know, he does not have any chances to control this wood area. He only has 50 villagers anyways. And indeed, losing that fight, the castle will go up and give a big hand for Mr. Lurie. Oh, giving... That was quite a best of three, Nilly. God, what an incredible strategy there by Lurie. Waiting for the restart, going for the early, now the handshake of his brother, and Lurie is super happy here, <laughs> getting the head rubbed. And yeah, just going for the steal of the one boar. It's, like, it's, it's the only map where we have only one elephant. All other maps we have like two. And therefore, it's even more efficient. Then he knows, okay, Tato will easily switch onto those ostriches. Let's kill them as well. It was so sick because he sent the villager before he'd even scouted. So it took a lot of balls to do that, but probably had the courage because he still had a restart. But what was really amazing to me was how the eagle, um, sorry, the scout stealing the elephant, lured Tato's eagle away. And there's just a couple of tiles there where Tato missed it. And you're in Tato's position you got to be so frustrated. You lose that elephant, and then you lose the zebras. That is just amazing tournament play. And the thing is, if Tato doesn't see the elephant being stolen instantly, he will keep his eagle at home and can easily kill the villager there as yeah. well. So it would be so much better for him. And then, just brutal aggression by Liri. Actually didn't wreck too well against those militia early on, yeah. but didn't lose that much. Went for archers, went for the aggression. Nice and early scout switch as well. And then those knights. It's really tough for Incas to play on such a map. Well, full credit to Tato to take it to this point, though. I mean, <laughs> I was not expected to get this far. And there was a time where I thought, I, honestly, if he had a different civilization in the castle age, where he could have made knights, I think it would have been very different. But the Inca, he didn't use the Incas to his advantage early on. Um, I think maybe if he had a knight civ, it, it would have been a little bit different yeah, for him. Yeah, but probably. And very just utilizing it so much. Maybe even a civilization that has some camels would be pretty good for Tato. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm still surprised to see Incas there. I think Incas is more of a, like, Russia sea civilization than let's go into a very scrappy castle age game. Yeah. So maybe another civilization would have been better there. Yeah, well, uh, either way, that was... I mean, which one was better, game two or game three? I don't think I can decide. I feel uh, there were moments in game three, the beginning stages of this game, yeah. where I've never seen it before. So it was so new and so refreshing to me. But I think uh, maybe game two was better overall. I think game number two was the more competitive game and yes. had like more back and forth moments. But I think if you ask me about what was your game at the Gamescom one year ago, I would remember that game more likely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, here's the military stats, and this is how close it was for you. I don't know if it's going to come up on the screen here. Well, it happens. We, we, we talk a little Let's bit too much. Let's still talk about... <laughs> okay, so 201 units killed for Leary, and 187 units lost, 181 units killed for, for Tato. So maybe some friendly fire there, Wolf, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, also, the largest army is very close, 56. Ooh, that's Tato. surprising. At, at 55 for Leary, yeah. I think it was the massive skirmishers and crossbows. And, you know, again, he didn't have an answer to the Maganels, really. Um, it was just smart play all around for both players. There's the resources, though. And there's a huge difference there. Yeah, double the food overall. I uh, guess we should read it off because they, they can't see it. So 21K food for Leary, 11K for Tato, 18K wood for Leary, 14.5K for Tato, 1,600 wood for Leary, 1,500 stone. Did I say... I think I said stone <laughs> for Tato. And then a little bit more gold. There's 400 more gold for Leary. Pretty damn good stuff. And now we have to ask ourselves the tough questions. The Viper or Leary? Okay. I made two predictions. I made, I made the save prediction. I, I posted... Sorry, you didn't read it. But I, I did. I promise. I wrote it somewhere. Mm -hmm. It went... The safe one was Viper, Tato, Leary, MBL. Okay. But my heart said, okay, I, I want to lie and say I said Leary first, just for okay. drama, but I did I said Viper, Leary, um, Tato, MBL. Okay. I think Leary, like, 
mindset is so important. I was talking to Jordan the other day, well, last night, about mindset. And Leary seems to have the mindset to come out and pull stuff off like that. Sick, sick. Yeah. And that's really showing you some preparation. Yeah. Speaking of preparation, MBL is getting ready. And Tito still has his PC set up. And we will pretty soon jump into the loser bracket game here. All and right. I believe it will be you and Killer B, right? I know I am on. I believe Killer B. I, I got, I got yes. some nods over from the side. <laughs> so, looking very much forward to see you guys cast that series and to see who gets eliminated. Just get the, get the crowd pumped up a little bit for us, please. Okay, then I would say let's take a small break. Yep. <laughs> 